had it underneath my bed and I could actually hear the planchette moving. Stop. I ended up throwing it in the dumpster and it made it back under my bed. So full discretion, some of the stories we have tonight, we were debating whether some of them should or should not be read. 23 years ago, in the same area of Connecticut, very close to the Warren Museum, where a significant amount of cases have happened too. I just find that very Ooh. interesting, that it's kind of all in that same world and even same time frame of Ed and Lorraine Warren. I just hear... Every time we turn on the doll, it says, you're going to die. <laughs> what the, what the f is happening? And he flies away. <laughs> That's all he had to say. <laughs> but whoever wrote this, you're kind of f***ed up, but also hilarious. If this awful. is the first podcast you've <laughs> ever listened to, you're like, what the f***? So we go in that graveyard and I look behind a tombstone and there's something crouching with yellow eyes. I do know that I probably brought something back and I feel like it is staying there for some reason, but I don't want to freak her out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming out and being here during golden hour in one of the most haunted places in the world. It's great lighting for selfies. Yeah, anyone, please take a selfie right now. You're going to look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 7.15 p.m. inside of Waverly Hills, the cafeteria. Yo. Oh, man. So Waverly Hills. Yes. This place is uh, pretty haunted, some would say. I feel like this actually might be the most, other than the Paris catacombs, this might be one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known haunted location yeah. in the world. Like everyone, regardless of what language or what culture, what part of the world, you know Waverly Hills, mm -hmm. which is so bizarre. And that's why we're here for two nights and like super excited to be to having this event here. Yeah. People have submitted stories. So everyone who had a ticket was given a form to submit stories. And we have quite a few of them here. And the main goal here tonight is to read these stories and then bring them on stage to talk about them. So that way, because in our belief, you may not realize that like, you're not alone in having these encounters. So that's the goal here tonight is just bring fellow one of you, the peers that are among you up here to share. So that way we can kind of create a more of an open communal fun space yeah. to share these stories and make you realize like, hey, those weird encounters you have, like you don't have to hold them in. You can talk about them. Yeah. You don't have to wait until you're 23 or 21 like Corey did <laughs> to finally share <laughs> that he's been haunted since he was four. <laughs> hey, hey, I wasn't four. I was 10. Okay. And it's because I played with a Ouija board. You're I'm sure some of y'all know that. I just wish you had all those like uh, letter blocks and your parents were like, why are you selling devil? You're like, it's not me. I swear <laughs> it wasn't me. Could you imagine? They're like, Corey, why did you change the voice of what the doll says? Like every time we turn on the doll, it says you're going to die. <laughs> Like, why would you do that, Corey? <laughs> Just like, you got a little, a little tickle me Elmo, and it's like, ah, tickle me, tickle me, tickle me. Tickle me! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would sell very well at Toys R Us, if you think about it. That would be so much fun if we could just hack into the factory, like go in there and just change a couple of them. Yeah. There's just like 12 tickle me Elmos in the world that are just like devil worshiping <laughs> Elmos. Or we could just find the factory and put, you know, all your Dybbuk boxes in there. Mm. I think I think they would do the job. Six, <laughs> six, six. six. <laughs> That's your favorite number. Yeah, did that. Yeah, it's a good number. It's a very good number. I've always noticed it. <laughs> Everyone's like, eh. it's a good number. Why not five five five? I don't know. You know? Yeah. Five 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 is fake. What's fake? Five five five. Why is five 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 fake? Wait, that's a real number. I'm confused. Are you real? What's, what the fuck is happening? He flies away. <laughs> that's, that's all he had to say. <laughs> I will send you to Earth to send one message. 555 five, five five is, is not fake. real. <laughs> what about 444? Four, four, four? There's someone else back there. It's not real. <laughs> the whole audience is gone before the show ends. <laughs> Well, should we bring our, our friend, fellow investigator, special guest of the evening on stage so that way he's not back in the heat for too much longer? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should. Okay. I think we should. Should we do it? Can you can you intro him? Oh, but can I do it in a cool voice? Yeah, do it in a cool Wait, hold on. Real quick question. Anyone here have like a super crazy, awesome announcer voice? Nope. Okay. Corey, go. I do. <laughs> oh, okay. wait. You do. What am I saying? Yeah, I do. Dude. Yeah, I forgot about the Texas racetrack. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Oh, no, get ready for this voice, okay? Wait, can we sidetrack real quick? Has anyone seen the Texas racetrack video where we like got to control the entire PA system for 5,000 people? They hated me there. It was they the funny- They hated me. Half the people thought he was just like a drunk employee. <laughs> having, and then other people were like, this can't be real. Yeah, and what they didn't know, I just wasn't an employee. Yeah, <laughs> you were just <laughs> drunk. <laughs> okay, okay, right, ready? Let's, let's ready bring, him on, bring him okay. on stage. I'm, I'm gonna try to do a really deep 
voice announcer. Here we go. <clears throat> Ain't she dishing? Come on, Special come on, give, give him the real one. Give him the real one. Come on, give it. Give him. Corbin deserves it. Corbin, Corbin always hears that voice. Give him, give him a good one. Give him a real voice. Introducing special guest, Corby Ryhart! Yeah! <laughs> Let's go, Get Corbin. Get up here. Oh, the you, there, there's steps. All right, look, I know you can do parkour, but you, <laughs> safety, safety, use it. Use this. There you go. You got Look, it. Look, if anyone falls off. What? 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 Yeah. I like that. If anyone like falls it. off the stage right now, we have a first kit. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. First, first aid. aid we have kit? a first aid kit from 1908, that ready is to go. 1908. <laughs> the only first aid kit to make you worse when we use it. <laughs> the only first aid kit to come with tetanus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm How not gonna doing? lie. I'm actually feeling like I'm gonna fall off the stage right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's stage dive. First ever stage dive. Are you? <laughs> No, 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 no. We haven't done that yet. We have not True. done a stage dive True. yet, no. Do you want to try it? At the end of the show, go ahead. End of the show. At the end of the show. End of the show. Yeah. Half the end people the are like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Everyone's going to move their seats to back there. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the show, I'll do a flip off the stage or something. Well, Corbin, Ooh. thanks thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, Appreciate man. This flew, is cool. Flew in today. This Been is an awesome location. I love this place. And I do love that it's going to get darker and darker and darker. And by the time we're telling the the, the, the stories, the scary stories, it's going to be basically pitch black in here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I'm so excited for that. Yeah. So if anybody has any night lights, there's an outlet back there. <laughs> you can plug them in. So full discretion, some of the stories we have tonight are actually... We were debating whether some of them should or should not be read because they're they're heavy. Um, and per the traditional format of our videos, we tend to start a little bit more goofy and then work our way towards serious. So I feel like we should kind of work our way towards that. So we, we had an idea before the, the before the show started. <laughs> oh, my God. Was to do a game of would you rather be haunted by and then just have random people like celebrities and decide who we'd rather be haunted by out of two choices. <laughs> Did anyone curious. here write any names down? Just like like make noise, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> OK. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no. All right. So I have them here. So we're, we're going to start with You have this. no idea what these names are. No. I, we, <laughs> we Let's go. I think everyone like started coming in like an hour ago. And I was like, Ginger, get 80 pieces oh, of paper. I'll take those. Uh, you want the flowers? Never mind. Uh, here you go. You want to reach in? These are all of them. It's almost full. That's it. wild. Okay. Okay. I just grab one. Get yeah, you grab can. one. And then Corbin grabs one. And then all we'll right, switch Corbin, it up next round. One. Pringle can. Oh, God. What would be the worst combination of people? Well, let's start with that. Who would you never want to be haunted by? Santa. Stephen Hawking. Wait, Stephen Hawking? Hold on. We're going to start there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Stephen Hawking. Why would you not want to be haunted? One of the smartest people to ever grace the earth. I think it's because whenever <laughs> we're doing it, well, first off, I, I started in a bad place. I started in a bad place, all right? But Corbin's about to do mental parkour, just no, like, no, no, here's no, the no. line. No, I'm not. Uh. I'm not. All right? What I will say is that the ghosts that I'm scared of the most are intellectual ghosts because they actually understand what you're saying. Okay. Ooh. And who is one of the most intellectual people ever to live on this planet? So. And you, you also know you could outrun them if he came after you. <laughs> oh, my God. You think think that's what his ghost body no, would be a, like? If he's a you ghost. think he'd still be in a chair? Yeah, dude. What are you talking that, that's, about? That, the chair's a ghost too. The whole theory is as in life, as in death. Right? All you got to no. do is just stand up like I this and know. be like, all right, <laughs> get me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, oh. think, I think he can fly. I think he'd be <laughs> able to fly. Mental gymnastics. Yeah, he'd have a lot more time to figure out how to do it too. And then what was your Santa Claus? Yeah, Santa. Why would you not want to be haunted by Santa? Just, I don't know. Just always eating my cookies and like, <laughs> there's never it's any like, milk. <laughs> and like, I drink a lot of milk. An abnormal amount of milk. Yeah, like a gallon every two days. It's one day a year, bro. <laughs> but if you're haunted by him, it's not one day a year. You see him every day. Yeah. You wake up and it's just like, jing, 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 jing. <laughs> there's like little footsteps on the roof. That's creepy. Yeah. But it also depends on if you're naughty or nice. Corbin. And we all know. <laughs> we all know Corey. We all know Corey. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, this is good. All right, hold on. Oh. So, so the, to clarify, the game is: Would you rather be haunted by A or B? Oh, okay. who? Who is? So, who is it versus who? 
Okay, oh, wait, you ready? I gotta yeah. read mine first. This is fu- <laughs> this is funny. Okay, would you rather be haunted by Jack Harlow? Or <laughs> 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 Jack Harlow. I didn't expect anyone that recent of a celebrity. That's good. That's good. Or Betty White. <laughs> Ooh. Now, technically, one of them could actually haunt you. As of right now, yeah. As, As of, of right, right now. now. As of right now. As of right now, one of them could haunt you. Oh, okay. State your case. I don't know. Who? who? State your case. I'm, I'm going to say Jack Harlow. You would rather be haunted by Jack Harlow. Yeah. Why? Because I'm a producer and I want to get some hits on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He literally ghost writes for you. <laughs> oh! oh, that was good. Thank you. I that appreciate that. Nice. Or Betty White. I'd, I'd love to go for Betty White. She seems like a, such a sweet, caring ghost. She's so sweet. And she's so funny. She would like apologize if she ever scared you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, she'd like creak the door and be like, I'm sorry. No, no, I don't think so. I think she'd like, I think she'd juice it. You know what I mean? I think she'd like squeeze, squeeze it out of you. I thought you meant she would just use steroids. No, no, no. no. She Betty just White's like, juice it. Yeah. She's like, hey, Satan, give me some of that good stuff real quick. Could oh. you imagine yeah. Betty White just benching 405? <laughs> Process that. That she would actually be incredible. Okay, if it was jacked Betty White, then yes, I'll, I'll choose Betty White instead. Too. Wait, what? Jacked? Oh, okay. I thought you were yeah. trying to hybrid Jack Harlow. Oh, Jack. Oh, that's, Jack a, that's a couple name. Oh, wow, that's a good one too. So you'd rather be haunted by Jack Harlow, I guess. just for yeah. self self gain, self reasons. I'm just trying to, you know, make some bangers. Okay, is that is that a, a green? What, what what's the consensus? Betty White. Give noise for if you'd rather be haunted by Betty White. <laughs> Now, who would rather be haunted by Jack Harlow? That's it? That's a Betty White! Let's go! There are musicians out there. Yo, That's if why. I was haunted by Jack Harlow, I'd be setting all the ghost tools in my bed when I sleep. Like, come come touch my REM pod. Come on, Jack. <laughs> come on. Hey. The Bobulus just keeps over and over saying what? glamorous. <laughs> you could never use the spirit box, though, because he would only play his own songs. Every single time. <laughs> he would never. He would just stop it on the radio station with his song on it. His own song. Was popping. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> me, bitch, stop scaring me. What Jack? the fuck? <laughs> Jack. Jack. <laughs> oh you just find little, little like curly hair everywhere on your floor. <laughs> just smells like KFC. He's real. <laughs> <laughs> smells like KFC. Wait, hold on. You got to pick one more. This is so fucking funny. Okay. This okay. So here, funny. here. You want me or you? Oh, my God. Let's pick one more. This is so funny. Whoever wrote this, you're kind of fucked up, but also hilarious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Hilarious. Hilarious. This is a solid one. Can this you is, go first, please? Yes, is, I don't yes, I will. <laughs> would you rather be haunted by Johnny Depp or mm. or would you rather be haunted by Devin Lundy? <laughs> <laughs> That's his girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> he already is. <laughs> yeah. I would choose Devin. I think sure. you kind of have to. Yeah. Be like Devin would be like, why? You want me to just disappear when I die? Huh? No. You don't love me till life and death? And- no. <laughs> I, I would definitely choose Devin for sure. Yeah. But, but if it was Johnny Depp, what if it were like one of his characters that you were being haunted by? So it could be Willy Wonka. Ooh. It could be Jack could Sparrow. Be of them. Jack Sparrow. I would love to be haunted by Jack Sparrow. That, that would be amazing. Jack Sparrow would be the hardest ghost to like follow around a haunted place because he would just be like walking. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I think he's over there, but he's over there. <laughs> you would have no idea where he is. That would be fun though. Johnny Depp, imagine every night it'd yeah. be a new ghost in a way. Oh yeah, new character every yeah. single night. Sweeney Todd, that would be fun. Sweeney Todd Ooh. would be great. Sweeney yeah. Todd would be super Sleepy fun. Hollow. Yeah. Um, okay, let's say you and Devin are both ghosts. Okay. What what ghost date are you gonna go on? Probably probably like a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that did Devin give you the same answer? No, I mean, but think about it. like if you're <laughs> if you're in heaven. Imagine the buffet. You're literally, he's <laughs> like, like is that heaven sizzler? That's what he's at. <laughs> no, ima- I would imagine in heaven they have like lobster. Yeah. Yeah. And crab. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Chicken Alfredo. <laughs> and, but it's at a buffet. Yeah. That's not happening here. You know who would uh, cook for the buffet? Who? No. Jack Betty White. Buff, buffet. Buffet. Jack, oh, Jack that's a good White. one. Oh. It's a callback and a pun. Groaner. That's a good one. It's all right. So uh, what about you, Corbin? You better say Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Corbin, would Who you would like you? to be haunted by Devin? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Let's pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'd probably go Johnny Depp. I'd probably go yeah, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp would be so much yeah, fun. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, now now it's your uh, your your dream date with Devin. You're both ghosts, but you're in hell. What are you doing? Mm, There's buffet. no food in hell. There's no food in hell. You, you sure? Yeah. You you know that. Have you seen all of the illustrations, like all of the murals? Everyone's skinny. They're just like bone dry. Okay. If we had a dream date in hell. Like sit by the fire. I'd probably take her to like a Hell's Kitchen restaurant. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's good. But they're the nightmares. They never serve you. You just wait. Oh, you just wait? It. You order and they just keep telling you. Gordon five keeps minutes. running out. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, why aren't you cooking? And he just runs away and it's just that repeated over and over again for eternity. You oh, yeah, that roasted. would be pretty bad. Or I'd take her to the sauna. <laughs> so hell. Yeah. You would just walk around hell. We just walk. <laughs> <laughs> a nice walk through the lava. Yeah, that's pretty romantic. Sorry, do, nice, we have, do we have a couple more then? Let's see. What yeah, yeah, let me got? get one. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure if I know who this is. Yeah. Wait, well, okay, now you just got to read it. Now okay. I'm, yeah. We would you rather be like, haunted by... Jason Lee. Jason Who's Lee. Jason my Lee? name is Earl. It's, he's he's a pretty interesting guy. Oh, no. my name is Earl. My name is Earl. He also has a That sounds like friend. the most boring ghost ever to be haunted by. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every yeah. question you ask, you're like, my name is Earl. Earl. <laughs> Ouija board. Earl. Earl. Spirit box. Earl. Earl. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Squ Earl. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for laughing at that. Sorry, since, and since, thank you. Since and you didn't know, since you didn't know, you're you gonna pick another. Yeah, get it, get it, everyone. Get one more. Oh, I get to. Oh, let's go. <laughs> okay, oh. I like this one. Okay, would you rather be haunted by Tupac? He already looks like him. Thank you. And <laughs> I got Johnny Depp again, so I gotta put that over here. <laughs> oh, no. uh, but Lorraine Warren. Ooh. Oh, this is. Uh, I'm. I'm now that's intrigued. A, that's I'm a great intrigued. one. Ooh. I'm in a sticky situation here. Yeah, because I know you want to go the music route. Exactly. But Lorraine. You're you would go with Lorraine? Too. I would. Yeah, 100%. Ima imagine the activity you would get, you know, from her. Like, imagine the answers that she would give you. Because, I mean, I mean, how many years was she doing it for? Was it 40 years or 50 mm, years or something? I think it's 50, 55 to 60, somewhere in that world. She would know Insane. immediately. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have to teach her how to use the tools. No, you know, it's like the, It's like, hey, she Lorraine, this is a cat ball. She's like, no shit, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> no shit, Corey. And that's a REM pod. Beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> <laughs> She's setting it off. To <laughs> but but to be fair, those tools didn't exist when she was around. We we yeah. didn't have those tools. Also, she'd probably be the most annoying ghost to have haunt you. Whoa. Well, think about it. She was a psychic medium. She could read people ahead of time. Mm. So you never even get to ask a question. She would just answer everything <laughs> beforehand. <laughs> She'd be like, yeah, I'm in the closet. Like, down the like, You just, like, pick it up. And she's like, I'm right fucking there, Corey. That is true. That's that, good. That is true. And then who was the other option? Tupac. 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 And I'd go for Tupac. You go Because for Tupac. if Tupac told me who killed him, then I could solve that cold case forever. Mm. And that would be your legacy. That would be my legacy. But, okay, now Tupac haunts you. You yeah. solve it, but he's still haunting you after. Yeah. I, dude, it's one of the best musical artists Ever. Every time you get in your car, it's just yeah, exactly face <laughs> 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 bumping. <laughs> when did you get hydraulics? It's like, oh, I'm actually just I'm actually haunted by Tupac. <laughs> it's just I drive a, a Prius. I don't know it's why. a normal Prius. I don't know why yeah, it does that. I don't know why that sounds like that would definitely be a Dr. Phil episode. I'm haunted by Tupac. <laughs> just bring, like, oh, so explain to me what happened. <laughs> well, my radio turns up every time. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Would you rather be haunted by Rihanna? Ooh, mm. I like that. Okay. That sounded weird. <laughs> yeah. Where's Ginger? <laughs> All right. Would you rather be haunted by Elvis Presley? Ooh. And this one's kind of interesting. It's in the same, in the same world, John Wayne. Ooh. We got a three? We're yeah, we got a three. three. Yeah, we got a three. So it's John Wayne, okay. Elvis Presley, and what was yours? Rihanna. Rihanna. I think I'm going Rihanna. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like she would help me dance. I just feel like I would get just I would just get so much more sassy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Under my umbrella. Yeah. Hella, Wait, hella. Oh, could you Come imagine on, like boy. every time it's raining, you walk outside, they're like, hey, do you need this? And you're yeah. like, no. <laughs> Rihanna! <laughs> it's just an Riri's invisible ghost me. umbrella is just umbrella. protecting you. Umbrella. That's a tough one, actually. 
That's really tough because Elvis Presley would be my my one of the big ones, but I would say Rihanna. Wow. I feel like you wouldn't want to be ha- haunted by Elvis Presley because he might still be stuck where he died. And on the toilet? Yeah, so every yeah. time you go to the bathroom, you're like, dude, come, seriously, can you please get up? Yeah, you please. can't go to the please, bathroom can you anymore. Please get up. Oh my God. <laughs> I would choose Elvis. You, you would choose, ju- really? It why? gets lonely in the bathroom. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? That's why you have your phone, dude. You bring it with you every time. What about when it dies? <laughs> That's how long you're in there that your I'm phone chilling, dude. dies? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> yeah. dude, sometimes you just get lost on TikTok. Let me know? ask you this. It's <laughs> true. Do you watch more TikToks than you do wipe? Oh, my. Oh, 100%. What's your, what's your wipe to TikTok ratio? <sighs> One to 13. <laughs> <laughs> One TikTok to 13 wipes or 13 TikToks? 13 TikToks per wipe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. I mean, I'm chilling in there. He's, There's no need to leave. You're comfortable. <laughs> You know, the AC is normally right above you. Here's, here's the worst part about him spending so much time in the bathrooms that we're in the motorhome. In the motorhome, the bathroom is the only way to get to the front to the bedroom. Oh. Yeah. So no one can leave the bedroom or go to sleep while he's in there. And they don't even know I'm actually not even using the restroom. I'm just on TikTok live. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you, Brittany, for the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, okay. I missed that bathroom. Should we flip the switch and go into the stories? Flip it. Yes, we flip should. Flip it. Mm. All right, you got the first story, man. It's a yeah. It's a heavy one. I'm going to clean up these papers really quick. Yeah, this story is actually very heavy. It's and, very very heavy. And and again, prior prior to like us starting the story, um the reason truly that we wanted to do this as a live show. We could have read these stories from our house. We could have done them at home. We could have done Skype calls or whatever. The main goal here is that when you're leaving and you're looking for other people to investigate with or make friends with and go explore, you're in a room full of people. You know for a fact every single person in this room has that common bond with you, which is a very niche bond. So it is kind of harder to find people in this world. So sincerely, after the show, we'll take pictures with all of you. We'll say hi, but also say hi to each other, make friends. It's, that's, that's what this is really all about. So I just want to kind of re-clarify that. And that is the main reason of these stories too. So just kind of keep that in mind and why we're reading these stories and why we're here and why we're doing this is for that exact reason. Yeah. Carry away. (sighs) So it starts off with, I'm not sure if I should put a trigger warning, but this story deals with death and serious injuries. On November 16th, 2020, my friends Kobe, Haley, and Dalton and I went on a little late night trip to the Colville Covered Bridge. As every small town bridge ghost story goes, if you do this little ritual in your car, you'll see a lady appear either standing in front of you or hanging in front of your car. Well, we had nothing else better to do apparently, so we decided at 2.30 a.m. we were going to go. On the way there, I took a video on Snapchat and put the caption, If we die, we die with the real ones. Basically joking about going to the bridge. Once we got there, we drive through it slowly, looking around at all the graffiti, and then once we drove all the way through, we turned around and head back through it. I already had a bad feeling. Once inside, we stop in the middle of the bridge. My friend Kobe parks the car. We then start the ritual flash the car lights a few times, honk your horn a few times, then turn your car completely off. We then sat in silence for a good minute. I felt so uneasy while the other three start laughing and joking around because nothing happened. I knew nothing was going to happen. This was so stupid. There's probably nothing even here. Just some stupid ghost stories. Do something is what they were saying. Well, Kobe then tries to start the car. Nothing. He tries to start it again. Nothing. The car would not start. All of us then hear a thud on the back of the car. We all instantly shot our heads back, trying to see what the fuck made that noise. I then look forward and see what looks like a lady standing in front of the car. I don't think I have ever screamed so loud in my life. The others shot their heads forward to see it too. While we all were freaking out, 
Kobe finally gets the car to start and we zoomed out of there. The next few days were odd. My friends Haley and Dalton lose their jobs and we're both having a lot of family problems. While Kobe and I, we were two different people. We felt angry. Kobe would lash out and so would I. We were both filled with rage. That anger actually broke me and my fiance up. We are now happily back together. That's good. I felt crazy. This is the part where things take a horrible turn. The very early morning of November 20th, 2020, my friends and I got into a serious car accident. We decided around 12 or 1 a.m. we wanted to go driving again. The past few days were hell for us, so we wanted to unwind, and we did. This part isn't really a big deal, but hey, it's part of it. Before we headed out of town, Kobe took Haley to meet his sister at a nearby gas station. They had been dating for a few weeks now. We then ended up taking a complete stranger home. We then headed out. After about 20 minutes into the drive, I fell asleep. Once I woke up, we were an hour again from town. It was 2 a.m. and we decided to head back. As we were driving, Kobe started to speed. Now, Kobe speeds often, but not like this. As I look forward, I see a turn and my gut feeling knew we weren't making this turn. I braced myself and threw my arms in front of me. We went straight forward. The car met head on with a wooden fence and it went right through the car while the back part of the car hit a tree. Kobe, the driver, died on impact. Haley, the passenger, had a concussion and a black eye. Dalton was right behind Haley, the part of the car that hit the tree. He was unconscious and bleeding from his nose. He broke his arm and is blind in one eye now. I got the parts of the fence that missed Kobe. The fence went right through my left wrist and shoulder. My arm was 70% off. Luckily, I still have it. I definitely have the scars, x-rays, and even surgery pictures to prove it. People may think that this was a coincidence, but I 100% believe it was because we angered something at the bridge. Between all the problems each of us had in the span of just a few days, we fucked with something that we shouldn't have. I haven't went back to that bridge since. I never will. I will never mess with the paranormal like that ever again. Oh. And that's from Whitney. Damn. I've I never heard a story like that before. I know. Whitney, are you, you were here, right? Is Whitney not here? Wow. Okay. So she's not, the whole point was every, every story is supposed to be from someone who's here. Wow. That's pretty crazy. You know, that reminded me a lot of the Warren Museum, actually. When, uh, when they were talking about the Annabelle doll. And the motorcycle accident? Mm hmm Because the, one of the main things that they said about it was that he challenged Annabelle and basically said to do something, you know, because he doesn't believe them. And, you know, since I heard that story, it's just been a weird, weird thing of mine. It's just like, just don't, don't be antagonistic. Don't yeah. insult. Yeah, you just, you really never know. But I kind of agree with what you just said a minute ago. That might be the most like intense like haunted ghost story i've heard because that kind of ending like that kind of stuff happening just at like they just they were you know they're just kids they're just driving to a haunted bridge trying to have fun everyone in the town does it and then you know what ended up happening to them and their friend passing away yeah. like if that was because of paranormal and you know pissing something off i just just it's honestly terrible and here I am doing that every single night. We go out and investigate. <laughs> every night I'm like, what are you going to do? But may, I, don't know, I don't know. Maybe there was more stuff that they put, didn't put in the story. Like maybe they were saying, you know, like, I mean, you do say follow us home. Yep. But, and you do mess with demons. Yep. And you, you do get own, possessed. Yeah, you did get possessed. You did get possessed. Maybe. And you do yep. own like 30 Dybbuk boxes. 29. But Who's we're okay. Us? You know, we're okay. 
Yeah. Because we cleanse ourselves. You know, we know how to. We do, you and me. Protect ourselves. Although we do have birds flying into every vehicle we're getting into now. So that's new. Stop. Planes, RVs, cars, lots of birds. That's, yeah. a, that's a new thing that's happening. Yeah. So since that person's not here, um, and what we noticed in the last few shows is that some people have experiences that they did not submit a story. Is there anyone who here who has had something similar where they have challenged something during the investigation and have had something, not obviously as is that traumatic, I could never expect that to constantly happen. But has anyone here ever had that situation? You have? Okay. What what has happened? Not as intense. Uh, our old house, very haunted. Uh, me and my siblings used to go down there at like 2 a.m. play hide and clap. Uh, it's a fun game. We like that game. Good yep. Fun. Good game. You know what? Did you, what, what did you do to challenge? So I was, I was it looking for everybody and wait here let's let's take that mic back because that's impossible to film so we'll bring you up we'll bring you up here we'll, we'll navigate yeah, come away up on stage. hey let's go yeah there you go essentially uh i felt something like touch my shoulder and then like do that with my hair hmm. so i ripped the blindfold off and i was like okay if that wasn't one of my friends do it again and then immediately a glass mason drawer got thrown at me did it break? Did yeah, it hurt? it broke on the floor. Did it take off 70% of your arm? Thank God, no. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> Thank it, God. it missed me, but it landed right at my feet, and two of my friends watched it happen. So they were like, nah, let's, let's yeah. dip. But you weren't even challenging. You were just playing hide and clap. Yeah, but then it touched me, and I was like, do it again then. Mm. Oh, I see. I you see. left that part out when you originally told the story. Just want to remind oh, did you. I? Yeah. <laughs> you were like, I was just playing hide and clap and then it attacked me. No, it was, I was playing I hide and clap. I, I called it a bitch and then it retaliated. <laughs> there was a huge difference in that story. I just want to mind you. You gaslit a ghost. I just. Were you to... gaslighting oh. a ghost? <laughs> but it's the same home that, that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. It oh, was wow. our old family house. Mm. For everyone that can't hear her, because I'm assuming 90% of you cannot hear her. Uh, she said that her old home that they lived in, they found out while doing some upgrades to it that it was an old funeral home and that it actually burned down about a year ago. And in one of the pictures of it burning down, they could see an entity within the smoke above it. For everyone that couldn't hear that. What um, what state was this in? Uh, Ripley, Tennessee. Wow. Oh, it's tomato like, capital. That's why. That's I love why. ketchup. It's <laughs> Wow. Well, that's, that's cool. That's a good part of the you know, story. You're, you're hungry, aren't you? Uh, yeah. That's the third time. <laughs> catch up. Well, um, maybe let's go on to the next story then. Yeah, thank you okay, for the story. Maybe let's that, make that sure the great. person's here before we read the story. Okay, cool. Sure. Okay, well, thank you for sharing. I'll take yeah, that thank you. Quick. Yeah, give it up. Give it up. Yay! This is why this one's interesting. It happened at Waverly in 2019. So I work as a scare actor at a haunted house, and we have a party that happens after the season for most of the haunted houses in the area. And they were doing a two hour tour for the actors. Had paid some money still, but not as much. And so on the fourth floor, there was a shadow figure. It's, Can I just it's, stop you? Look how cute you guys look reading together. <laughs> the two of you are just like, mm. <laughs> Really? Do we really look cute? <laughs> oh, see, they said yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, don't lie to yourself, Elton. You can stop me at any time to give me some compliments. I'm you know always what, down for that. You know what our uh, ship name would be if we dated? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Corby? Cor no. no. I was going to say Corey. Oh. Or Corbin. It can't just be your name. Why? Well, <laughs> it could be your I name. Want a relationship No, name. because your name be is- Your name. Corbin. No, yeah. it, it would have to be like Binry. Binry? Like the second half of your names because they both start the same. That's Binry. what makes it cute. Okay. <laughs> Can I read the story? Carry yeah, go on. Go back to the story. Okay. But look uglier this time, both of you. <laughs> read it uglier. Yeah, there we go. I can't do that. So on the floor, fourth floor, where the shadow... Yeah, fourth floor. I can't read, guys, by the way. Where the shadow figure is stood uh, walking towards us, we all... Then it went on all fours, and I watched it crawl onto the wall and onto the ceiling, still coming towards us. And then we continued down the hall... And we turned around, it was gone. But also during that night, after I dropped my friend off at her house, the radio started acting up and it wouldn't go past static for a little bit. Then I got home and washing off my makeup from the night, I heard a little kid screaming in the bathroom with me while I was scraping my makeup off. I also had some weird experience 
when I was seven to 10, I would assume I was like years old, right? Seven to 10 years old at my aunt's house. No months. Hey, hey. <laughs> Inches. <laughs> shut, shut up. Where I woke up in the middle of the night and saw some alligator type entity hissing and snarling with yellow, glowing yellow eyes while my cousin's cat was attacking it and it followed me into my aunt's room. What? That's, that's pretty crazy. I, I think one of the reasons why I like this story so much is I, I don't think the videos have come out yet, but I've heard my first disembodied voice ever of a woman screaming. So when you were talking about the, the little boy screaming, uh, now I actually know what you're talking about. And it, it's weird. It is a very weird feeling to, it just doesn't make any sense. So I, where I was that? Right. Which, which, uh, night? the monastery. In, S in uh, Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, was I with you? No, you were oh. up top. So I don't even know about that yet. I haven't even I watched that basement. editing yet. Yeah. 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 Well, let's stop talking about stuff that nobody knows yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just start talking about things that they have literally won't see yeah. for like four more months. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I want to hear more about this story. Let's bring him up. What was, what was the name? Come again? on down. Jacob. Jacob. Come on up, Jacob. Give, give, a, give, a, a, give it up a for Jacob. Jacob. Here you are. Thank you. There you go. Is uh, is Horrorplex? Is that like what you work for as yes, the actor? Yes, this, uh, this is the haunted house that I work for. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Sick. Very Hold it uh, like kind of like in this world. Yeah. Kind of like in this? Yeah, you should be able to hear yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to Do something cool with the mic. It. Do something cool with the mic. You're a performer, right? You You're a scare performer. Hey, whoa. Whoa. Hey. Yo, that hey. was sick. That he did, said cool, I'm going to say bro. this. Didn't scare me. <laughs> yeah. Excited. Yeah. Ex got my heart rate up. Got my heart rate up. It didn't scare? Whoa. Hey. Hey. Scare us. Can you scare? Dude, come on. Uh, do, do a scary voice. Oh. That one? <laughs> what? I don't know. What? That was I a demon with his pet goose. <laughs> Peggy, yeah. can we make that our ringtones, please? <laughs> 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 when I know when you text me. Every time you get a text. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm getting a text. Ready? <laughs> oh, it's Elton. It's oh, Elton. Elton. I'll be Elton honest. That just sounds like a demon's phone on vibrate. Instead of like <laughs> 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 it's just that noise. <laughs> it does sound like that. Dude, You've been that, working on that. That is I good. Have, I definitely have. have. I have worked on it in a while. Um, I used to live across the street from Knott's Berry Farm, actually. Oh, and wow. So I would always want to go to Knott's Scary Farm, and so nice. I eventually did, and then I learned how to do the scare actor snarl. Nice. Just so everybody knows, Knott's Berry Farm is pretty close to us. It's like a, it's like a local amusement park. Yeah, it's like, it's like a Six Flags, yeah. a lower lower budget Six Flags. It's yeah. the same parent company as Cedar Point. Okay. Let's go, yeah. Cedar Point. I love Cedar Point. Dude, I thought you were going to like get super excited for Knott's <laughs> Berry Farm because they make jam. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, boys and jelly. Jelly. <laughs> I love jelly. Let's go jelly. <laughs> also, I will say that we all did a actor uh, in a haunted house at Penhurst. Yes. And that yep. was a very, very interesting experience. too. that was really cool. I loved that night. Yeah, it's it's very fun. It's like it's literally like a second family and it's great therapy for screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like that. We go. We go. <laughs> Like if you're throughout the whole year, you're just like coming through and you're just like, oh, this is a terrible year. And then you come through, you start season and you get to scream at people. And then that's just like the best form of Are therapy. you in one of those places where you could touch people? We are not. Oh, okay. Mm. Are you unfortunate? Because uh, pretty stressed and October's coming up. <laughs> we are actually. <laughs> yeah. We are. Dude, but I couldn't imagine you doing it. I feel like I would just like insult people. <laughs> yeah, you would. You, you don't even <laughs> have to have makeup to be scary, bro. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> carry on. Why did we invite you? Because <laughs> it's that's Corbin. We film with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's actually what's what's kind of interesting is we've gone to Asylum Forty Nine, which is a, a haunted location in Salt Lake City. We've done a couple other places, like for example Waverly Hills, that have haunts, and we always hear that during the October season, during the scare season, when these haunts happen activity actually tends to spike up because, and all the owners believe it, it's because there's so much more energy, so much more people that they feel like they can kind of be more incognito and scare people. So they actually say that the actors tend to get equally as scared as the guests that are coming through paying for it. Do you, like as, obviously you had someone follow you home in this circumstance. Oh yeah. But have other staff members during the haunts been like, huh, what was that? Um. I don't think to that extent. I know, I think that we have uh, like a haunt ghost is what we just call it. Something. I you said a hot ghost. Uh, 
Damn, hey, you got they, a baddie? Yeah. They could be. They could Wait, be. That's, that's Carlo why you gotta do that area? to the mic, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Carry on. But like uh, some tools will go move in across the haunt and no one's touched it. Uh, randomly, one of one of like uh, the two by fours could fall and no one's around it. None of the fans are on or anything. Mm. And just kind of like simple, basic stuff. Wow. What before we get into the actual depth of the story, what is the worst you have ever scared someone? You ever made someone pee their pants? I have not, but is that, that the goal. Do you guys get like yes, gold stars? We do oh, actually. You get, like, you get little like I have, you get little whoa. stickers for what you do to people. <laughs> Wait, you do? Hey, I have a little hey, badge. Oh. Yeah. Not gold what, stars. What, is the what does that badge gold mean? Wait, uh, is that a yellow for like pee? That's yes, for pee pee. Oh my god! It's a it's a urination badge. <gasps> Ha oh. Haunters Urine Nation member. That sounds like wow. the worst Boy Scouts badge you can ever <laughs> get. I know. I never got that. It sounds like R. Kelly's badge. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, hey. sorry, oh, sorry, hey. sorry. Too right. soon. Everyone yeah. boo. Boo. <laughs> boo out <laughs> I'm taking all of Matt Rife jokes tonight. <laughs> you are. Doing, you know who we are. So you earned that badge. Did you have to prove it? Did you have to uh, like, collect the sample? No, is so, it just a scout's honor? Like I swear I did it. So we have, we get uh, walkies. I'm just here to make Corey laugh. <laughs> That's my. so we get walkies for certain people for like security reasons, and usually they'll go um, code yellow, which means P P P. And we also have one for, <laughs> we have one for code brown, which is poop. Oh, we got. Please tell me you have that badge. I do not. <laughs> okay. That's a badge. Um, that's what senior get, level people have. You can on. get a badge. You can, can wow. get that badge. I want to get that badge. Uh, most people just buy the badges, but that's also not. that's just such a super cool way of saying someone pissed themselves. <laughs> code yellow. Code yellow. Yeah. That's awesome. We got and a code yellow. <laughs> Imagine Mountain Dew accidentally comes out with that. <laughs> code they, yellow. They have code red. <laughs> wait, wait. What's code red? Don't. Blood. <laughs> Blood. Oh. Code green is throw up. Ooh, <laughs> we got we got a code brown with a little bit of red. Wait, can you <laughs> imagine scaring someone so bad that they vomit? Um, actually, okay, that we're year, gonna get a story out of this. Yeah, that year go. that we went, we had one of the actors have like we made these little poop things that <laughs> anyone could eat. <laughs> wait, wait, anyone whoa, can eat. Whoa, okay, wait. <laughs> tell me more. Yeah, please. So they were Corey's hungry. If you haven't noticed, so. they were they were like oatmeal, vegan free, gluten free, everything free. <laughs> and at the time, we had a pass where we, we we were allowed to touch you, and we had to force someone to eat that before everyone can move on. Mm. So we got a lot of code brown, not code browns, code greens, code green because of the throw up. Yeah, to move on. Jesus. Classic code green moment. So you have to get hazed before you haunt. Yes. Is the, is the story here. Yes. Okay. So should we get into the actual yeah, story? Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest, by this well, point, kind of forgotten half of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have some questions about the story. Yeah. Tell me more about the shadow figure. Because sh I've, been, I've been hearing a lot recently of people seeing shadow figures, but then they get on all fours. Mm-hmm. I personally, I haven't seen that yet. I don't think I, I will. Actually, we have seen stuff crawling crawler. around on the SLS, yeah, crawler, but definitely it's kind of it. been yeah. explained as if like what I've been hearing is they see it like a shadow man, but then it transforms into like an animal or something. Could you tell me more about exactly what you saw? So the at the time, the tour guide was like, yeah, we have a shadow. We have a shadow figure on the fourth floor. So we get up to the fourth floor and then she's like, all right, so we're all just gonna congregate right here and then everyone's gonna turn off their lights. So we all turn off our lights. She's like, all right, you look down that way. He's already there. So he's standing there and he's kind of just walking towards us, kind of just like, a, just looks like a regular person. And then um, as soon as we're just like there for like 30 seconds. And then when she's like, okay, we're about to leave. It gets down on all fours and kind of just grows into this, like taking up the whole hallway, like the length of the hallway and just grows and just starts crawling and what? then just slowly moves onto the wall and then moves up to the, the ceiling. Did anyone get a code brown badge from that? I wish they did. Okay. Yeah. But sadly, no. Turtle. Everyone that's, else was just. That's insane. So right. did, that has to mean it's a demon, correct? If it's like shape shifting and transforming into something else, one of that mean it's demonic? I, I don't know. I mean, skinwalkers can shape shift. I mean, I don't know. There's so many. Uh, no one knows. I, that's what like, I'm no one has like out. an actual like fact list of what they can. It's not like Pokemon where you know like their abilities and their evolutions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine this play? Shadow Man 3D, 40, <laughs> 50 defense. 
<laughs> Continue. <laughs> it's landed on my trap card. Oh. oh, that was good. I like that. One. <laughs> and then you went home. Yeah. So went home and dropped off my friend Taylor. And so she lives not too far from here. So it was a quick drop off. And so as soon as she leaves and I start to pull out from her driveway, the stereo is just all static and like nothing's wanting to connect or anything. It was just playing static. So I had to turn off my car and then turn it back on and then it was perfectly fine. So then I drove home. So this is an area that you would get radio. You would get a signal. Yes. Yeah. Because just- it's like 10 minutes from here. Oh, wow. Now at this point, have you put two and two together that they could be connected? Or no. are you just like radio issue? I was just like, well, I... I think I did. I don't remember. Uh, I could have just been like, well, there it goes. And then just turn it off and then turn it back on. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you weren't, this wasn't a moment that you were scared. This was no. just more like a, okay. It gotcha. wasn't until I got home and then I hopped in the shower to get off my, my actor's makeup. Yeah. And then I'm scrubbing, I'm scrubbing. And then I just hear ah! that loud. And no one's in your house. My parents are asleep at the house. But they didn't hear it. So do you think this was a, 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 a someone from the place you were scaring people being like, ooh, my turn? No. No? No. So what do you think it was? Um, I think it was just the, I think it was the child entity that's here, actually, that followed me home. Because you know mm-hmm. how there was the child entity that's on the third floor? Third or fourth mm. floor? The one that likes to play with the ball? Yeah. yeah. I believe it's that one that followed me home. How did that make you feel that, you know, something could be attached to you or bad gone to where you live i was scared at first and then i was like you know what if you want to stay here you can like come check in and like see how i'm doing just scream at that's you a perfectly, little bit more. if you want to scream at me that's yeah, fine exactly that's perfectly fine did you teach the kid the <laughs> noise no it didn't oh, yeah. it didn't didn't stay long enough for that sadly Dude, that goes it, so many more people would spend time with him they'd roll a ball and you just, <laughs> <laughs> just just oh look a ball <laughs> What was that? <laughs> so did you offer him a ride back home or like how did he hitchhike? Like how no. did he get hey, back? Elton, he's in the shower, bro. <laughs> he's in the shower. But the like better after. question is were you like scrubbing your back and then hear the That's scream that. and then go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, scrubbing my face really hard to get this makeup off and then I hear it and then I'm like, what? You kept going. <laughs> wow. Yeah, what do you do in that situation? Because you can't just end your shower. You got to finish your shower. You could definitely end your shower. Would you? 100%. Call the police. But what if you did shampoo <laughs> and not conditioner yet? Or what if the conditioner's only been in for like 30 seconds? And you're supposed mm. to wait at least two minutes. I mean, maybe get leave-in conditioner. Mm, that's Ooh. smart. There I also think that's why people get two in one. That makes sense. Oh, oh yeah. The act. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Oh, there's actually three in one. Three in one. You know, the body wash, conditioner, shampoo. You just like wash your hair and then let it run down to your body? Of course. Because then at that point, you're just washing your body with dirty hair soap. I would wash my feet and then do a heel stretch. (laughs) And then I would just let it drip onto my hair and then I would scrub it. Demonstrate. It's not this show. (laughs) Demonstrate. (laughs) It's a different different show. You don't demonstrate, you're a liar. (laughs) Yes, I'm lying. I can't do a heel stretch. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look at me doing the splits. Um, okay, I want to hear more about this alligator, though. So I oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> there was so much packaged into that There's little story. There's a lot story. of different things in this story. So I still get made fun of this from this by my aunt, who used to live at that house. Um, I'll bring it up sometimes. Like, hey, you remember the alligator? She's like, oh, yeah, the alligator. Um, <laughs> your aunt? Yeah. <laughs> your aunt's a bitch, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're traumatized. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. You should get your aunt to listen to this podcast. <laughs> Please invite me to your Thanksgiving. <laughs> she lives in Texas. Okay. It's only a 13 hour drive, actually. Okay. Okay. But I was sleeping obviously. Uh, mm. And then I wake up just from something and then I turn my head and then I just hear that like the signature alligator just hissing and just like opening of the mouth kind of. What? And then just see the little kitten just smacking it. Just smacking its head and I'm like, what are you doing? Wait, what, what little kitten? A little, His cat. A little the cat. cat. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. The, so the little kitten was just like smacking like smacking like behind its head and I'm like, what is that? And then it just starts like moving at first and I'm like there's no way that's like a cat because it has glowing glowing yellow eyes I'm like 
what? And then, so it comes from under the table and then I get up and I run to my aunt's room and it's slowly moving and I can hear it hissing down the hallway and then the doors open. So then I still see it and it's still slowly coming and it goes underneath, underneath the bed. What? Yeah. Just underneath the bed and I still hear it and I just go to sleep somehow. What? And then just nothing, nothing after that. Do you think that was the, like the shape shifting shadow? There's a lot of things at play here that you're talking about because you're talking about the shape shifting shadow, but then you're also talking about there was another entity here on the third floor that could have been the boy. Yeah. So that, I think, I think you're just fucked up. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) That's, that's, that's insane. Now, have you, have you done anything like at your home to make sure there's nothing still there? Like, have you felt anything since that one night? Like, have you taken any measures since then? Or are you just still like, yeah, hey, I'm um, here? Yeah, I'm still kind of just like, eh, whatever. Uh, actually, sometimes now. Um, so I don't live with my parents anymore. I live with my partner. And so I named it Toby, actually. Toby? The alligator? No, the the one, that, the little kid or oh, something okay. that followed me home. Okay. So now he checks in. What did you name the alligator? I didn't name him yet. Dude, that's probably why he's trying to kill you. Yeah, probably. that's what it is. <laughs> just like, come on, dude, give me a name. <laughs> I'm... Gerard, that's his name now. Gerard. Gerard the Gator. Wow. He's the butler. Wow. And so just now it's just like an occasional like peeking around the corner, like down the hallway to like see what we're doing and then just gone. Did you ever mess with Ouija boards and stuff? I've tried. That hasn't been successful for me at least. Um, but other than that, Did I've always said goodbye. No. No? I haven't, I haven't touched one since... Actually, f- before all of this happened, like before going coming here, okay, I would say 2017, 20, yeah, 2017 was the last time I touched a Ouija board. Okay, okay, you have to turn any fast food chain into a haunted house for October. Which one is it? The cashiers or scare actors? Definitely Taco Bell. Oh, that would be a really easy one to earn your brown badge because it's already gonna happen yeah. anyway. <laughs> Code Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have said Del Taco because I think you get more runny with Del Taco. A little bit. It's just it's like 2% more. It's not as bad. Though. So Del Taco or Taco Bell, I would say. Yeah. I, I like the Taco Bell one, though. You would turn Taco Bell into a haunted house? Yeah, for sure. Here's a beef chalupa. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nacho bell grande chasing you. <laughs> it's like, how is it walking? It's a chip. <laughs> Oh, that would be amazing. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Well, th- thank you. Appreciate for you, uh, appreciate you sharing the story. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That's great. Cool. Give him a hand. Yeah. Give it up. Yeah. All right. This is story number 3. I was living on the East Coast in Connecticut where I grew up. It was a house that my family had built on virgin ground. Now, if you're familiar with the East Coast, specifically Connecticut, which I actually am, you know that Native Americans were hunted and killed to the point of non-existence, specifically the Mohegan tribe. I grew up in that area. Flash forward to when I am in existence. That's a weird way of saying when I'm alive. (laughs) It's not my birthday. It's my existence day. (laughs) Happy existence to you. (laughs) Happy existence to you. (laughs) Flash forward to when I'm in existence. It's winter. I was about seven or eight years old, old enough to go hunting. What the f- what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're seven just taking down bears. Depends on where you are. Could have been <laughs> duck hunting. Could have been duck, sure. Yeah. It's winter. I was about seven or eight years old enough to go hunting and know how to handle a firearm. What? <laughs> Dada, safety on. <laughs> Dada, safety (laughs) off. Dada, teacher gave me a C. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) All right. Enough to know how to handle a firearm. The house was relatively close to a neighbor's house. You could see through the trees, roughly 100 yards apart. Of course, the eight-year-old hunter knows how many yards apart their neighbor's house is. (laughs) 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 the back of the house faced my bedroom window and their house had motion activated lights 
Well, one windless night, I will never forget this, it's been over 20 years now. The lights went on and woke me up. I thought it was strange being so young and clueless about Native American lore. I decided to look out the window. To my shock, I saw a pale figure darting between the trees. It looked tall, but on all fours. Hmm. Yeah. Human-like, but not in the same instance. With what seemed like glowing eyes. In fear, I ran up to my father's room to wake him. At this point in my life, my parents had gotten divorced. He awoke and told me it was just a dream. A few days passed and it happened again. This time, it had just snowed heavily. Same creature as before. This time, I woke my father and told him a strange man was by my window. He jumped out of his bed and grabbed the hunting firearms we had. His rifle and my little 20 gauge shotgun. We threw on jackets and grabbed some lights and went on the hunt. Just an eight year old just hunting demons. <laughs> Typical, Come on, Dad. Typical, Typical Connecticut, you know. I knew if I told him about the creature, he would have brushed it off. My father, a Vietnam veteran, didn't believe in any paranormal stuff. He called the shows he saw about it. Stupid hippie mumbo jumbo. Turn off that stupid hippie mumbo jumbo. <laughs> and he used to make me laugh when he would say it. <laughs> but when we got to where I saw the creature, he believed. For in the snow, there were barefoot tracks. Huge prints bigger than my head and spaced apart as if an animal walked on all fours. But instead of just footprints, there were scratches and handprints too. Years later, I did research. Come to find out, what I had seen was a Wendigo, or what the Native Americans called it. Wow. When you said barefoot tracks, you mean like like a bear, or do you mean no, like bear, barefoot, 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 like actual like bare feet? We can gotcha. see the toesies. Gotcha. You know, toesies. Little demon toesies. First off, wow. This is the most mature eight year old I've ever heard. Before. <laughs> He's like, Dada, we must hunt demon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Papa, say grab dada. the arms, he grab the firearms, dada, Papa. Papa. Father. <laughs> yeah. That's how he calls that. Father. <laughs> well, I mean, with a father as a Vietnam vet, I can I, probably understand. I, understand. I can probably I understand it. why. Okay. So, wow. uh, Blake, we know you're here. Come on up. Come, Come on, on up, down. Up. Give it up for Blake. Yeah. Give it up for Blake. <laughs> wow. Here you are, sir. Oh, my God, the mustache. Damn, I'm so... Wait, hold on, please. Give me a second here. You got it. Need some wax? Do I need some wax? Can I take some of yours? <laughs> <laughs> I probably used enough. Wait. He probably grew that thing when he was eight years old. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, pull the right one down yeah, just yeah, a this little one. bit. Just that one on the other one. Yeah, that's better, good. Better, oh, that's better. Good. We're going hunting. <laughs> hunting demons. Hunting demons. There you you go. Go. the demon hunters. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a show. That could be. It already is. It's an anime. Is it? Oh, oh, oh Demon, Demon Hunter. Slayer. Demon yeah. Slayer. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're correct. Okay, so we have a bit to unpack. What part of Connecticut, first off? Uh, the uh, southeast part in a small town called Ledger. Okay. Oh, you're moderately from where I am, because I'm from Shelton, Connecticut. Yeah. So we're kind of in the same area. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I also had uh, bare, not bare feet, but I actually had barefoot uh, tracks on a trampoline when I was like 16, 15, 17, somewhere in that window, and no tracks leading to it, just like little tiny girl footprints on the snow on my trampoline in Connecticut. Nothing leading to it, nothing leading from it, just on there. We never explained it. And then now we have this story. Also Connecticut, also snow. And Are you guys going to kiss? I don't understand what's going on right now. <laughs> I, no, 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 I no. look at people when have they you seen, talk Have to you me. seen Avatar where their hair is tied together? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our mustaches are going to <laughs> intertwine. Whoa. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so you obviously were so convinced in the in the circumstance and you made the right decision, right? Because you didn't tell your dad all oh, spooky paranormal. And and you did he believe from that point on? In a sense he does in some ways, but most likely just like what they're classified as is I guess cryptids. Unidentified creatures that mm. science can't like what, what is it called again? A, a, cryptid? a cryptid? A cryptid. Yeah. And is a Wendigo uh like basically a branch within that? Uh, well, Wendigos are part of Native American, like, lore. They're just, I guess, unrestful souls. Mm. Mm. And they're just, from what I've seen, just ugly. <laughs> just 
<laughs> Horrible Roast looking thing. <laughs> Roast him. So me. Got yeah. it. <laughs> I did it for Corbin. Sorry. <laughs> I knew he was going to do the joke, so uh, I beat him I to was, it. I, no, I wasn't. I'm a nice guy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this circumstance, you go out with your dad and you're and you and you find what what's going through your head? Like did you what what happens after this? Do you set up more motion cameras like or traps or like what what what's the thinking from here on out? Well, that's the wild part about the whole story is whenever we went out there, I was expecting my dad to like maybe see it itself but instead what i ended up seeing was large footprints maybe that big what whoa yeah huge huge footprints if you're listening he basically said about a foot and a half yeah if it, it didn't look normal and so what um we also found scratches like claw marks on the trees near where the footprints were and then almost like a cr- like a person you know, goofing off with your friends, running on all fours. Yeah. That kind of uh, movement, but much larger space between. When your dad saw this for the first time, you know, did he, I don't know if he thought Wendigo, but like, what did he think right at the beginning? What did he, what did he come up with anything that it could have been or? It, Cause you're a hunting family. So yeah, you probably exactly. know what all the animals are in the area. We didn't really talk much. Well, um, what? No, 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 no. Let, let me finish. It's, it's, it's wild. Um, he okay. didn't talk much during the situation because when we when we were out hunting, you don't you don't really talk a lot. Mm, yeah. You don't want to scare anything away that you're trying to, for like a term, kill. Yeah. So he was just, you know, analyzing the situation. Like, what am I looking at here? What am I looking for? Mm-hmm. And to this day, he still does not talk about it. He wow. I bring it up once in a while, and he just goes, huh? <laughs> and it just goes back to whatever he was doing. Uh, it. it it's the oddest thing ever. Wow. But wow. even worse is that after that, we hunted it down, never found it. Wow. The woods behind our house just go for miles. And it, it's it's insane. That's You grew up in Connecticut. You know how sometimes those small towns just have woods everywhere. Yeah. And they just seem to be endless. Do you feel like he doesn't want to talk about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It took him until I was about... 25 to actually talk about his military service in depth. Gotcha. Okay. So he's a very closed in person. He doesn't talk a lot, which I didn't get from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously, I can't run on sentences. Yeah. Oh, no. no I, yeah. That was, that was, yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'm just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> it's actually very well written, I will say. I did, I did like it. I did. Oh. To my shock, I saw a pale figure darting between the trees. <laughs> it looked tall, but on all fours, human-like, but not in the same instance. With what seemed like glowing eyes, in fear, I ran up to my father's room to wake him. Papa, at this point in my life, <laughs> my parents had gotten divorced, which I like how you're just like, you just threw that in. You're like, my parents were divorced, by the way. Yeah, well, like, didn't, you could have just been like, woke it up, dad, but you were like, you wanted us to know, huh? Well, that's because my mom is uh, an Italian woman, so... She's very protective, close-knit kind of Italian-style family. And if my mom heard about that, she would have immediately called 911. Mm-hmm. She would have come out with the, the rolling pin. Just like, who's trying to hurt my no, baby? No, yeah. no, that's the wooden spoon. <laughs> no, the wooden spoon. Oh, right. I'm a wooden yeah. spoon survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can we get you little badges for that, too? Yeah. I don't know. Can we? Spoon badge. Yeah. Probably <laughs> Instead of uh, brown spoon. badges, just wood grain? Just wooden spoon. Yeah, like a maple wood. We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it since, or was that the only time? That's the only time I've seen that creature, but I have actually seen like hellhounds before in the past. Hell I played with the Ouija board in the graveyard. Uh, mm. <laughs> like that's all I have to say. I mean, you know Ouija board. That is not uh, all you have to say. You just said you like to talk a lot. That is not all you have to say. You really yeah, think it's like, I saw hellhounds. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is expensive, so I'm not going to do a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please yeah, don't. I want to hear more about the Hellhound experience. It was just me and one of my exes just goofing around with a Ouija board in a, gra- in a cemetery near my mother's house. Typical date night. <laughs> just goofing around. That's a typical date night? Well, No, actually, dude, it's a joke. What the <laughs> I was going to say. I realized who I was talking to, though. I mean, where are we now? I would, not wrong. I would believe that. I'm on yeah. a Tinder date. I just send a pin. She's like, I think I'm here. I'm by the tombstone. I'm like, yup. <laughs> it's her birthday. You think she's mausoleum. getting flowers? <laughs> she is. She's like, why'd you from send someone me a else's. box? Sorry. She's like, I opened the box and like, there's a bone in it. <laughs> <laughs> sure it's not a Divic box? 
Ding, ding, ding. I will say, okay, wh- how many years ago was this? You said, you said about 20 years, but how long ago was this, though? Uh, the uh, Hellhound or the Crypt? Or the, the, this, this story in particular. That story, so I'm 31 now, so 23 years? 23 wow. years ago, in the same area of Connecticut, very close to the Warren Museum, where a significant amount of cases have happened, too. Mm-hmm. I just find that very Ooh. interesting, that it's kind of all in that same world and even same time frame of Ed and Lorraine Warren and all those cases. And they well. also have some uh, figures there that were from the woods that, that, that had this. Yeah. yeah, the satanic, yeah. The, yeah. the satanic idol from yeah. Devil Made Me Do It. Exactly. And the other, sorry, crossing things over the satanic idol that was found in the woods. And so I don't know. I just find that interesting that your story is kind of in that same world. So have you heard of any other stories from other people that have seen similar things in Connecticut or was this kind of like a taboo thing you just don't talk about? Uh, personally, it was a taboo thing I didn't really talk about. I'm, I didn't talk about it with my current girlfriend till we started actually watching you guys, oh. believe it or not, together. Really? And I was like, hey, this is a story that happened to me. Wow. Yeah. And did she share, did she share one back or did you felt really awkward and vulnerable? <laughs> oh. she, she's like, okay. Oh. Uh. I'm not gaslighting you, honey, so I'm just going to uh. say this now. She did share a story, and actually it's the one that she's... Uh, Exploiter, go. No, no, no. I can see the face. <laughs> She's turning redder than a cherry right now. <laughs> what do you say? I said it may be in there. Oh. Oh. Okay, we'll find maybe, out. We'll find maybe. out if it's in there. Yeah. But no, um, she did share a story. Experienced a lot together so far, so I'm sorry, honey. I don't remember it. I know. Bad Yikes. boyfriend. Not, not. <laughs> that was not only on the record. That was on that record, that record, <laughs> and that record. And the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this record, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you might uh, want to get her like a chocolate Dimmick box. Yeah. <laughs> she's I think she'll no. never she's, open she's, it. She'll never open it. She's saying it. no. It'll just collect dust. She'll never open it. <laughs> I will, but she won't. So would you say that at all? Is, is your relationship at all founded upon the love for the paranormal too? It's definitely strengthening it for like 100%. Like we go on investigations with uh, a gentleman who's actually done exorcisms. Oh. May I have his phone number? I'd have to talk to him first. I'm asking for a friend because he needs it for... <laughs> I thought you got possessed. <laughs> oh yeah, no, allegedly, I, allegedly. That's the friend. No, you right did. There. Allegedly, you did. Allegedly, no, carry you on. Did. You were asking a question about hellhounds. <sighs> yeah, great, great uh, subject change. <laughs> yeah, tell tell me about that experience. Like, what did what did y'all do when you saw it? We literally left the Ouija board and ran. What? Oh. So you never closed out the session? Nope. That's mm. not good. And then and then I just went back the next morning and picked up that Ouija board, closed it out, brought it home had it underneath my bed and I could actually hear the planchette moving. Stop. I ended up throwing it in the dumpster and it made it back under my bed. So that paragraph was that long. You could have added quite a few more. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking on an iPhone, so uh, I didn't know how much space I had. Got it. <laughs> wow. You know, something uh, similar happened to us. This, this is a true story. I don't know if I've even told you this, but when I was younger and the Ouija board started to get our house super haunted, my parents threw it away. And then months later, when it was Christmas time, they were in the garage getting out decorations. And the Ouija board was in the garage in a cabinet. And you have not told me this. Why? Yeah. Why have you not told me this? I don't know. Where's this Ouija board it. now, Corey? Do your parents still have it? Yeah, they May- actually do. They actually still have it. They do. We were just talking. When I was with them a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about it. So I'm going to call your dad and we're going to get something shipped to us. That Ouija? No, I don't know. I should. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can do I actually don't know if I could do that. That's, that's, that. For the record, this is how it normally starts. Cut to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah, I, I will never touch that Ouija board again. And you, you guys never tried to throw to. it away. Cut to. Yeah, exactly. You guys never tried to throw it away again? Or? No, no. After that, they just kept it. Wow. What I should probably do is you seem like the magicians that like have a nice dining room table set and there's like a like a curtain or a tablecloth over it and they yank it out. Yeah. You're just like using a Ouija board. I'm like, ha! <laughs> so we'll be, eating dinner. It'll be that one underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Placement. Okay. So I you decided to procrastinate closing a Ouija board, came back the next morning, and now you've seen wild different animals. Hey, what about the town? I still want to, I'm still very curious to know about the town. Like, so you didn't talk about this like until I'm I'm assuming you don't live there anymore and you moved at some point. Did you tell anyone else in the town that you lived in about this? I didn't think anyone would believe me. Like Mm. how do, how do you talk about like bring that up in this passing conversation? Like 
hey, I saw this pale white figure. Like, it was huh? my dad. Yeah. Do you're going to put me in the loony bin. I'm here right now. <laughs> <laughs> and out of curiosity, do you believe that had you ever brought that up to any other people in the town, that m- others would have been like, hey, you know, me too, actually? Probably in that, like, small section of our town, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised because we were a close-knit group in, the, in that neighborhood. Like, You think a lot of people do the same thing? They, oh, yeah. If they've ever seen anything like that, they just kind of keep it hush-hush? People are too, hush. like, terrified to, like, speak yeah. out about something that's taboo. They, will, they feel like they're going to get shunned. Do you regret not saying anything while you still live there just to see if anyone else? Truthfully, no. No. Because it, like, made me research later on in life and develop this love for the paranormal and brought me here. Like, I don't think if I talked about it, I'd feel like I'd have to find more answers because it would have felt common. You don't think you would have felt like the the Avengers of like Connecticut demon hunting if you would have found other people that are like, yes, we will do this together. That's what the Warrens did. The Ledger Militia? The what? The Ledger Demon Militia. Is that your mm, name? That's that, the that name. could be the name. Yeah, That could be the name. We'll we should all go get that with tatted name. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Demon Militia? Yeah. That actually does sound like a clothing brand that would have existed during Warp Tour. Just <laughs> de- Demon Militia. <laughs> yeah. At Hot Topic. That's a band, actually. I got space for that ink. Yeah? Let's I'll get it. it on my weenus. I got space there. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 You'll get it what? On my weenus. What? You, know what that, you don't know what that is? What? Wait, why is, one, is that an elbow? A weenus? An elbow? It's the skin it, on your on, elbow, bro. No, it's not. Did you not yeah. go to middle school? Everybody who went to middle Dude. school knows about this. This is called a weenus? Yes. Yeah. If, you, if you look this up yes. in the encyclopedia, this is called a weenus? Is this Urban Dictionary? Nobody no. has ever come up to you in middle school and go, oh, you want to touch my weenus? No. <laughs> no. That's literally my entire childhood. I mean, dude, I was homeschooled and that happened to me. <laughs> Ouch. What teacher? I was homeschooled. <laughs> what teacher do we need to... Re- Who did that to you? So back to the hellhound. No, no, not back to that. <laughs> what? Your mom was just like, hey, Corey, let me wiggle that weenus. No. I was trying to make fun of you and say that I've had people say it to me. I was trying to sound cool. He was in Because I was class. homeschooled. Corey tried to bully no me friends. and bullied himself somehow. <laughs> oh, d- I- I'm proud of my weenus. Excuse me? <laughs> Humorous. humorous. Oh, the weenus is very humorous. I get it. What? No, this is this is the this is the humor. I'm so. What in the hell is going on in anatomy classes? Elton, Elton, Elton. Okay, so next time you get touched on your elbow, please say that though. <gasps> you touched my weenus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I can say that. Anything else for Blake? I'm no? good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> That's it. I'm good. I'm g- hey, Blake. I, honestly, thanks, man. <laughs> I feel like your dad raised a Navy SEAL who was eight years old by that time, <laughs> going out in the snow and trying to find this guy. That's insane to me. Yeah, you're, that you're, you're eight brave. years old. I wouldn't walk down the stairs to a basement if I was eight. And you're already going out hunting. It's yeah. crazy. We had a full gym in the basement, so I went there all the time. You had a gym? Yeah. You were shredded, probably. <laughs> no. You probably had no, abs. This, 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 this is all flubbered. It, oh, it, yeah. it, it didn't stay. I feel like his breakfast was just like Wheaties and bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, it needs more bullets. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't lock the firearms up, so whenever growing up, like when I was old enough to actually understand what he was talking about, he taught me firearm safety. Yeah. So that way, if... I ever came across one in the house, I would know not to mess with it or how to check it to make sure it was even safe to touch. Makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I love guns. Let's go have some fun with them. No, it was more like, oh, that can destroy stuff. Maybe I shouldn't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, I just want to confirm one more time. No one ever came forward in your town that they saw something similar? Not to me, but I am going back in October with Ooh. her. So Are you uh, going to go to that area? Oh, yeah. They still live in that house. Stop. What? Yes. Surprise, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Happy That's birthday. Good. That's good. <laughs> no, no. What was it? Happy oh, existence day. day. Happy, Happy existence, existence day. Existence day. Yeah. day. Wow. Or eviction day. Or eviction. I can see that you have a very open and honest relationship. You had no idea where you were going in October. <laughs> oh, she knew she was meeting the, my parents. She just didn't know that it's the same house. Hate to break it to you. What'd you say? He didn't tell me otherwise, so I figured it was the same place. She was prepared. She's wow. smart. Nice. Good, good, good. Smarter good. than me. Obviously, because you ratted yourself out so many times. <laughs> so many times did you just exploit yourself. That's fun. You literally broke cardinal rule number one of any relationship. Admit that you don't listen or remember anything that they say. <laughs> he didn't say that. Yeah, he did. He was like, sorry. 
I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> yeah, what's your girlfriend's name again? I'm just going to tattoo it on my hand real quick so I don't forget. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm going to get my girlfriend's name tatted on my toes. You don't have Why? Why? So you, you stub your toe, toes. you can just yell her name? No, it's just like, you know, like one letter for each toe. It's just been a dream of mine. So you're going to... It's a weird so dream, So if you dude, break yeah, your yeah. toe with the D on it, you broke your D. Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. Okay. But well, thank you for the story. Yeah, thank you, Blake. Yeah. Appreciate it. Ooh, give him a hand. Give a hand. Yay. Thank you, sir. Yes. Do we want a serious reading or, or a dramatic reading? You know of Corey Gad said that. Dramatic. Dramatic. So... Many of my family members that have been in my childhood home have had <laughs> paranormal experiences in the house. Mainly noises when they were alone or full body apparitions. Is this David Attenborough? That is. <laughs> you that sound is. like a knight. <laughs> I never did, which kind of made me jealous because who wouldn't want to see a spirit? When I <laughs> Can I do ad-libs? Yeah, do ad-libs. Okay. 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 When I was 18, mm. on a morning in July. Good morning. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? We're doing commentary? I thought you'd be like, in a morning in July. It's hot in July. Damn. Oh. Like, I thought you were going to do that. Dude. Okay. Okay, I got you. I got <laughs> you. That would made sense. I got you. Yes. Okay, let's try again. Okay. When I was 18, on a morning in July. It's hot in July. Woo. I was home alone as my father was at work. It was just me and him at that time. <laughs> the way our house is set up, the upstairs has a narrow hallway separating my room and the spare room. The rooms are separated from each other. The bathroom is in the spare room because my parents don't love me and said I didn't deserve a restroom. Wow. Does it say that? Does no, I, that? I broke that. <laughs> I was going to say. So in the mornings, I'd go there to get to the shower. Where the shower is, it is against a wall, as most showers are, where on the other side, it's just an open space where people enter showers. The door. <laughs> that morning, I did my normal routine, taking a shower. I usually play music, but that morning I was in a hurry since I was waiting on a phone call from my boyfriend <gasps> at the time. Out of nowhere, against the shower wall, I heard three knocks. It was light, but definitely a knock. Thinking, <laughs> thinking maybe my dad or Sam, the boyfriend, had come over early and was just fucking with me. I knocked back, not expecting a harsh knock to come back as well. I got a little uneasy at that point and decided to quickly get out and get dressed. I walked out. And no one was in the room. I called dad. Papa. He was at work. I called Sam. And he was on his work. On his way to work as well. So I was indeed completely alone. I asked Sam to stay on the phone with me while I finished getting ready for the day. And left the room. I locked it. I know it wouldn't stop a spirit. But it was more for my own ease. As I walked across the hallway. Shut and locked my door and continue to talk to Sam. You forgot the ad-libs, huh? Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> About a minute after, a gigantic bang on my door interrupted all thought. <laughs> it sounded like someone took both fists and banged them on the door in agitation. <laughs> In editing, we're going to have to swap out those noises. <laughs> God if this is awful. the first podcast you've ever listened to, you're like, what the fuck <laughs> drugs are these dudes on? You, don't, you never know commentary. what the knock sounded like. You, have you ever heard a knock sound like that? Yes. I just did it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was terrified and bolted outside to wait for Sam. Barefoot and all. It's not my first experience, but it's the first that has truly terrified me. That's the end of the story. You are like Papa. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Josh is trying. He's, He's doing commentary. He's trying to do commentary. He's doing commentary. He went from, I'm going to do ad libs. So I'm going to do fart noises <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. 
It worked. So I, I will say that is the bulk of the story, but we always have, I have follow-up questions. And the follow-up question, which is interesting to me, was why did this experience impact you so much? Do you believe in the par- Did you believe in the paranormal before this happened? And this is why I liked this story, because the answer to this, it was the first one to actually terrify me. I have had multiple full-body apparitions and malevolent spirit encounters since the whole side of my mother's family have the ability to see them. My mom and I are empaths as well. This one just sticks with me because I was, it was in my own home. And after that experience, a floodgate of experiences happened in the house for me. Wow. So this is just the first one. So we need to talk to this person. Okay. And then, and then there's a third part that says, and this is the follow-up question I have on there. Do you feel anything still haunts you to this day? If so, have you done anything to stop it? And then here's the casual follow-up answer. Oh, for sure. Everywhere I go, no matter if it's a store or a restaurant, I see the same apparition of a woman. When I'm at the store, if I look down the aisles like I'm walking and I see her walking on the other side. What? That can't be Just super casual. Yeah. It was like a couple fart noise knocks. And now we've got a demon ghost malevolent apparition following her around at Vons. I want to hear more about this. There's no Vons here, is there? That's a grocery store that we have. What about Ralph's? John's. Ralph's. Kroger's. 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 There we go. Thank okay. you. And I didn't ask first, but is uh, is Kylie Doll here? Doll, Dale, Doll, Doll, Kylie, Ooh. come up here. Come on down. Come on up here, Kylie. Wow. I am very curious about this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for one writing in the story and then answering the follow ups. Yes, like my whole family has lived in this house my entire life. They see apparitions in there, and then I'm over here like, where the fuck is my experience? You get it every day at Vons, apparently. Wait, who is, who's this person that you're seeing? I do not know. Like, I used to work at a family dollar, and I would I was a manager, so I'd close, and I just looked down and see this lady in a white dress, like walking down with me. Now, wow. does she ever judge you when you're in the snack aisle? No. Like you're like going to get Oreos, and she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> She just kind of stands there. I don't get any easier around her. She's just kind of there. Okay, it doesn't come closer at all or, or anything like that? No. Okay. The only time I think she ever came closer was right after the knocks happened. She was standing over my bed. Oh. <laughs> where, so again, where was what? that in the, uh, <laughs> where was that yeah. in the story? <laughs> she was standing yeah. over your bed. Yes, I mean, everyone has in that house, in one particular room, they've heard a woman singing to them or someone standing over their bed. It's in my dad's room, so he always sees it. Wow. What what state is this? Kentucky. Are it's about four say, hours I heard away. that, and I thought it was like Connecticut again. <laughs> Kenta- okay, a house in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Now, have you seen her to a point where you could describe her to an artist? Yes. Have you tried doing that? Yes. Um, we think it's my neighbor's mom because oh. we, I explained it to her like we're really close, and she goes, I think that's my mom. Like, whole facial feature, how she walks, everything. Did she used to sing a lot? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, your neighbor. And how does how does your neighbor feel about this? She finds it amazing. She's just like, you're actually seeing my mom. That's pretty cool. Now, yeah. has your neighbor ever come over to try and? No. No. She's like, mom, I love you, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I moved out 40 years ago. <laughs> she's like 86. So she's just like, okay. Oh, got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you ever talked to a? medium or anyone that could try to get answers to why that's following you? No, I just chalk it up to the energy that I create because like I said, I'm an empath. Yeah. Even when I'm here, I've been lightheaded, dizzy and nauseous the whole time. Wow. Oh, I thought it was just a bad show, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Everyone here is just, it's, it's Waverly Hills making you nauseous, right? And sleepy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, like my mom, she told me a story about when I was eight in the same house, I was talking towards the wall. She asked me who I was talking to, and I told her, oh, it's Toby. He used to live here. My house was built in 1901, and I was just plain out talking to this thing. Wow. Do, do you remember that experience personally? mm Okay. Because I I remember I had, a, like, imaginary friends, mm-hmm. you know, when I was a little kid. But as I got older, like, probably, like, five, ten years went by where I didn't realize it. But as I'm now in my 20s, I can put a face to what they looked like. Like I could actually see my imagination. Now I remember a little boy walking in front of our living room window and I could see the top of his head and that's it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you you grew up as an empath. Mm -hmm. How how do you feel like that affected you 
growing up, going through middle school and high school, did you feel it was, estranged to the rest of the people around you? It was terrible because when we had free days, they'd play like Charlie Charlie or they'd make little Ouija boards out of little things. And my middle school was an old high school that school shooting happened in. Oh. And so I would feel everything from that. Wow. Wow. That must yeah. have been crazy going to school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. What is what is Charlie Charlie? Um, basically, it's a game where you take two pencils or a pencil and you say, Charlie, Charlie, are you here? And the pencil's supposed to move. And it's kind of like a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. and, or even like dowsing rods. And yeah. 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 So they would play all these games for fun. Yeah. Like not believing it. Making a mockery of it. And here you are being like, ah, yeah. you don't know what's <laughs> going on. I'm, I would get sick and I have to leave the room usually. Wow. Do you ever go on investigations or is this something you just like process and internalize? Um, I process and internalize it now. Since my whole mom's side of the family does it, I really don't mind it anymore what do you what do you do for work like normal day-to-day -day <laughs> i'm i work at a car dealership now oh really it must yeah. be it, you must be so good at selling cars <laughs> you're like I, I can tell you want this car i'm not negotiating i'm not <laughs> budging on the price i know you want it but even it transferred into the apartment with me and my fiance when we had our apartment we had a spirit there and i named him clyde I loved clyde clyde i'd be at a concert and he would text me are you home yet no Okay, well, the dresser just moved in front of the door. Or to be sitting in the living room and the dryer would shut and I'd just yell, Clyde, stop doing fucking laundry. I'm trying to watch a movie. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and it would it stop. Would to, yeah. And it would stop. Yeah. Do you it's, think these are just random spirits that are getting attached to you because they know that you're open mm -hmm. and you can communicate with them? Yeah. Interesting. It's like the sixth sense. You can actually see. Yeah. You know, nobody else can feels like they can see them. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Do you have a name for the person who's following you? Your friend's mom? No. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you mentioned like a malevolent spirit, but you said that oh. you weren't intimidated. So what no, is the malevolent uh, spirit you're referring to? I was in a graveyard. Um, Typical ghost story. It was actually on Christmas Eve. Wow. Um, and it was like by the house. And every time I dr drive away from that graveyard, I'd see a person waving. And so I was like, hey, let's go in it. Let's see if we can find anything. So we're going through this graveyard. I'm feeling very uneasy. Like when I feel a bad spirit, I get terrified. Like my heart starts to race, I start to panic. Yeah. And uh, so we go in that graveyard and I look behind a tombstone and there's something crouching with yellow eyes. I bolted back to the house and did not go back. I do not like going by that graveyard anymore. That makes complete sense to me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm scared about this. If you're Elton, you'd probably just stick around and try to find out what it is. Yeah, I'd, I'd be like, come here, little kitty. Come here, little kitty. Come <laughs> exactly. I just bait it. <laughs> just come here, come here. What do you think it was, the, the figure that you saw crouching? I honestly think it was like a demon or something because it was human like. But so in size, you're saying yeah, it was, over five foot, like it was something of that, yeah, that magnitude. Yeah, it was had yellow eyes and like I could see the hair it had. It had like long hair, but it was like balding up top. So me, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever go to like read the name on the tombstone to like no. maybe see what that person looked like and there was a tomb in there that they called the witch's grave and it had a fence around it and it was near that why the is there grave. why is there a fence around it from to keep other people from mm -hmm. doing seances on it i yeah. assume why do why do i feel like people that do seances in graveyards is so much more common than i have ever fathomed like yeah. oh, out of curiosity has anyone here ever done like a seance in a cemetery a graveyard any any people? There's like uh, oh, six hands. hands up. A couple hands, yeah. Seven hands up. Okay, yeah. that's also an abnormal amount. I feel like. Yeah. Like I, I I think like out of every, I don't know, million people, one person's done it, but it's a pretty common thing. My mom always taught me not to do seances, not to do Ouija boards or anything like that. So. Did she learn the hard way, and that's why she taught you to not no, do that? Her mom learned the hard way. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. What did What did uh, her mom learn? Your grandmother. They were doing seance. Her and her friends were doing a seance for her friend's mom. And my grandmother really thinks she saw the devil. She saw something so big and so scary. She'd flip on the light, it wasn't there. She'd flip it back off, he was there. That's cool. This is why I sleep with my TV on. <laughs> and your yes. phone on, and, and all phone. the lights on. And the night lights. With, with, with your story that you were talking about, do you think it connects to the person that was waving at you in the graveyard whenever you pass by it? Hopefully not. Okay. But that was a person yeah. that was actually waving mm -hmm. at you. Like, it was like so light. Like, I would knock back and it was a very light knock. And then I locked the door, went to my room, and it was like they just put both hands and slapped it. Jeez. Is this something you can turn off or are you just like. I uh, just kind of. The, the best reference I can give is like Sixth Sense. 
when he's just constantly <laughs> seeing it and he can't stop? Or is it something I you can go- I just kind of tune it out now. You just tune it out? Mm-hmm. You just see a thing and you're like- No, every right. once in a while I'll see something like fly by me and I'm like, oh, okay, you're there. Yep, wow. <laughs> Huh. And, you, and you've and you no desire to, like, enhance the abilities? It's just a thing that you have? I and- would love to. I just don't know how to do it yet. Mm. You have a whole family <laughs> that does that. They, they really don't care about it. They're like, oh, I saw a ghost. Like, really? That's oh, cool, wow. but let's let's move on with our lives. And here we are, so, like, traveling thousands of miles. Exactly. Just <laughs> any chance to see yeah. one, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's one at Walmart. Uh, there's one at McDonald's. <laughs> like, Everywhere she care. goes, apparently. So my friend Alex, who actually showed you guys to me, I could stay at his house a lot. And when I first started staying there, he's seen it multiple times, there's a figure that crawls around his house. Really? He's actually here with me. Oh. He's got a crawler at his house. He's got a crawl. That's you just got a crawler in his house. Yeah, we're just like, oh, there it is again. But it yeah. kind of sounds. It's kind of similar to the previous story from earlier. Yeah, most people have like Xboxes. That's why they go to the friend's house. Here you are, like, no, no. We <laughs> we literally wait for you guys to upload a new video and we'll watch it together. Oh yeah, nice. yeah. So keep okay. waiting because it's gonna be a while before I get <laughs> another one up. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing. I had a Thank weird you. feeling when I read this and like you kept like divulging a little bit more information. I was like, I feel like you're going to have a lot more oh, yeah. to, to come. So I even drove up the, the pathway to here and Sam was with me and we had it on video and we heard a man singing in our car. In the car? Like in the car. Behind you or like? In, behind me. And we didn't hear it until we watched the video. Oh, this was today? No, this was like, Almost two years ago. Okay. okay. And the radio wasn't on. No, nothing was on. Wow. Do you imagine it's just like Justin Bieber in the background? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, exactly. It's definitely a spirit. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. Oh. <laughs> Luda. <No. laughs> well, seriously, thank you so much yes. for sharing. Yeah, a round of applause here, everyone. Woo. Thank you. So How'd you guys like the knocks in that last story? How'd you guys like that? Yeah. See, <laughs> See I told you. I told you. He doesn't I deserve told that. you. He does not deserve. Oh. That. Thank you. See, Why are you encouraging this? He's gonna do this for the next twenty-eight nights. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to change it? Want me to change the knock? No, it's okay. I could do this instead. I really hope. <laughs> what? Nothing. Forget it. Uh, no, forget I want to see what that was gonna be. What were we gonna what do? Were we gonna do? It's, what were we gonna do? Oh, now, now you're getting bashful. Yeah, oh, now yeah. I'm nervous. Mister, all I got a pink bow, and now I'm getting bashful. Hey, what was the noise gonna be? Bashful. It was gonna sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned that. Okay, and I've been no. doing it every day since. <laughs> no. What I love is that we do these live shows from these locations, and then investigate after. And so I'm just hoping the spirits here heard you do that. And then tonight, they're like, can we get a knock? <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Oh, I'm kind of getting freaked out though a little bit listening to these stories cuz I'm kind of putting something together, but I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it. I'm sitting up here freaking out. No, you can't though. you can't do that. You can't be like I'm not ready to talk. Do you understand what I deal with when we do videos? Do you get it? He's doing it right now. Where what he's like, are you talking he's like about hinting you at this deal thing. with on videos? You know what you do all the time? We go, Elton, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. You do that all the time. <laughs> but I tell you, you go, like, oh, oh, but I tell you later because oh, I don't, yeah. I don't want you to get so scared that you leave early or, or flip side of it. I don't want to tell you because then I want to see if it'll happen to you and you it's not coincidence. Because if I tell you, you might go, your brain might start thinking, oh, that's a thing I should look out for. Mm-hmm. But if you say the same thing happened that I also saw hours later, then we know it's a correlation. Mm-hmm. So I'm being smart about things. I'm not being a dick all the time. Whatever. <laughs> Key phrasing, all the time. <laughs> Whatever. Now tell most, us. Most of the time. <sighs> okay, so I'll make this quick. But long story short, especially recently, like especially since Warren... I have no idea why, but my girlfriend's apartment has low key. I think it's gotten insanely haunted from something I brought back. Like she texts me almost every other day, freaking out, saying that she's hearing more noises and doors are opening and stuff kind of by themselves. So I'm just telling her, you know, excuses. Cause I, I, I do know that I 
probably brought something back and i feel like it is staying there for some reason but i don't want to freak her out so if you're uh listening to this podcast babe hey (laughs) sorry this is how you're finding out dude you said in the name of jesus christ a thousand times that night and you Mm -hmm. still think yeah you got doused in holy water it was from that trip we went to a lot of places but warren was at the very end but yeah, 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 you're right. Warren was like right. the like the last minute thing that we got at the end of the trip from that era. Stuff has always happened there, but from around that time, stuff has been happening a lot. And she told me recently that she had a terrifying nightmare, and she said, "I've never had a nightmare this scary ever in my life." And she said that she was at a party with me and a bunch of her friends, and then all of a sudden these people like were trying to grab her and get her and they were just chasing her. And she said she didn't know why, but all of the people that were going after her had glowing yellow eyes. We have a common theme tonight. That's what I'm saying. She doesn't know that glowing yellow eyes mean demon. And why would that be in her dream? Like she just kept asking, why would they have yellow eyes? Why would their eyes be yellow? And it's just kind of making me think that whatever I brought back to her apartment is actually haunting her. And now it's messing with her dreams. And so I kind of got to give Patty a call <laughs> and have her come over. I and- just want to clarify that trip was uh, April 23rd. Check the date right now. He has now waited four months to consider calling Patty what did I speak to of? help get his girlfriend's house unpossessed. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's because of the dream. Like, dude, like. I've grown up, stuff like that happens all the time. Like, I talked about a story the other day where the water bottle was in a place that it possibly couldn't be after Mm -hmm. opening a door and coming back. Makes no sense. We both were watching a movie in our living room. We heard something crash and fall and shatter, like a glass plate just shattered in the kitchen. We searched the whole house for an hour. Nothing fell. Nothing broke. There was no glass anywhere. How did we hear that noise? The amount of times while we're on trips, she'll text me freaking out like the noise is happening again. She's seen stuff even in her mirrors, in her bedroom. So she constantly leaves all of her closet doors open. So she, you know, when she's laying down, because she feels safer for some reason if the closet's open than all of the doors. She's really scared of this place. Yeah, and I I think it's because I brought something there. So I know where we're filming our next video. Her apartment? I mean, yeah, it (laughs) is. Honestly, uh, I'm actually surprised you haven't been like, hey, Elton, can I borrow the sphere box and the REM pod and go to Devin's I, real quick? I I just don't. Oh, she's going to know now. But like, I just didn't. She should have known. But no, no, no. She's the one with there, all the experiences. If, if it was just a spirit messing mm. around and doing stuff, I'm OK with that. But if it's a demon and like hearing about the yellow eyes a lot today and recently and yeah. then processing that about a week or so ago, she had the dream with the yellow eyes chasing her. And then she was saying that once she ran inside a house and closed the door, they couldn't go to her. They just stood still. But every time the door would open, they would run. And when she closes the door, they would stop and just stare. And so it's kind of, I'm trying to process what that could mean. Like I need to talk to someone and we might need to cleanse her apartment. Yeah, cleanse the the place for sure. Talk to Patty and bring the tools. Find out, maybe you actually did actually have something follow you. I don't know. Because it's, I mean, dude, it's not following me. It's literally chilling at her apartment. It's very weird. Very weird. Well, on that note, we have the questions for the Q&A portion. Ooh, okay. We have time to do a few of them. Scariest location you've ever been to. Warren. <laughs> Warren. The Warren Museum, A hundred, A hundred percent. A hundred percent Warren. Why were you so scared there? I mean, like, obviously, like, we can, we can go, oh, all the items in there. But why were you so scared? I mean, like, it's not like you went into Warren two investigations in. You went into Warren after five, almost straight years of doing this. Yeah. And yet you were still that scared. And you had people around you who had been doing it and had been in possession of the doll for decades and decades who had never had anything happen to them. And they're all telling you you're protected. So why were you so scared when everyone around you is saying you're safe? Just because of the history with all of the items there. Like all of the items there are very much so super demonic and they all have stories of hurting people, you know, pretty bad. And I mean, when they freaked out, like they freaked out that I used dowsing rods. Like they were saying like, oh, you use dowsing rods? 
Like, okay, we got to do an extra cleanse on you. Like, that's bad. Like, it's stuff like that that freaks me out. Like, they told me, you you need to pretty much ask every question starting with, in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you don't, then that's opening yourself for it to attach to you. The last thing I want is Annabelle or the shadow doll attaching to me because I asked a question the wrong way. He's right, too, in terms of, like, if you're going to approach the fire, that is, like, that's like hell. Like, everything that's in that place is demonic. So, I mean, if you do anything the wrong way, if you step in a certain way, if you if you say something wrong, you know, you're always feeling a little uncomfortable. To be fair, though, I'm not, like, trying to combat you on this, but, like, not everything, in, not everything in there actually is demonic. That, okay. uh, that is actually, that's a, that's a an untrue, unjust statement to the Warren Museum. They do mm. have items in there that are haunted items from the plane crashes and other artifacts. Yeah, and they've been taking more and more items. Yeah, yeah so not everything is people. demonic in yeah, there. Yeah, but a lot is. But a lot is, yes. Mm -hmm. But I was just very curious to know, like, you have so many people that have literally, they live in that house. Mm -hmm. Like, that's their home, and they're and they're totally fine. Yeah. And yet, yeah, that was, like, the most fearful I've ever seen you. I edited out so many in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. The video would have been oh, nine hours yeah. long if I left every single one in. Yeah. I just... I you know just, that there's a drinking game for that video now? Take a shot every time you say in the name of Jesus Christ. No one makes it past 20 minutes. No one. Everyone's black out 20 we should, minutes. We should do a video. It's literally one of the top comments. It's like, this is like, it's literally a drinking game now. Like if you look at the video, it turned into a drinking game like three weeks ago. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just it's it's I love it there. It's my favorite place. It's probably my favorite place we've been to, but it's also the scariest. Corbin? Yeah, I, I, think place? I, I think I agree with that in terms of it being one of the scariest. I don't know. For me, a lot of the times it's the it's the smaller places that actually kind of scare me. The one was Burnbray Mansion. I don't know if anybody saw it, but it's the dollhouse that was in New York. Mm -hmm. Right. The attic. The full act. of infinite amount of items. Exactly. And that was like one of the first places I actually saw doors open and close and be alone. I think that was probably the scariest I've been on a trip when I saw that. So, yeah. Yeah, that that, that has to be it for me. Dang. What about you? Yeah. Scariest? Yeah, scariest. He says he doesn't get scared by anything. I don't get scared. I think, I think the scariest place to me was like completely irrelevant to the paranormal because it was suicide forest akihara mm. forest in japan yeah because like there was a legitimate conversation that was had like there's a right based on the amount of people that take their lives there every year there was a one in three chance that we would find someone mm -hmm. and that to me was like one of the, the scarier things to think about like back then we were just like youtube dudes trying to do youtube things yeah you know and we're like people wanted to see that so we're like we'll do it but at the same time we're like we're also humans that like we don't want to see this and like we don't want to like come across this so yeah. it was one of those like what are we going to do when that happens and we were like 99 percent sure we could see someone a couple hundred feet out and we're like all right that's that's the end here like let's let's turn out and go back um so i think that was probably one of the scariest things hmm. um here we go this is a this is a question uh from from whitney what would current corey elton corbin tell your younger self about where you ended up in your lives slash careers. I'm trying to think about how to phrase it. What would your current self tell your younger? This self is the most about like, where you ended up in your career. Unorthodox job, I think, in the world. So I don't even know how you would say that to your younger self. It's like like your younger self. Like, what, what age do you think you would tell them? Tell them like before, like years before even doing this. Ooh, or I'll it be could have even been right when you just started. I know what I would tell myself. What? I would tell myself to learn how to protect the shit out of myself. I would be super prepared back then. Like I would know immediately back then when I'm leaving an investigation to say, you are not allowed to follow me. I would know to bring the stuff that Patty brings us to put on the back of our necks that protects us. I would know the right questions and you know the wrong questions and what not to ask. I would, I would prepare myself for what we're about to get into so I don't bring something home like I apparently have now. What about you, Corbin? I don't know. I would say kind of just like strap in. It's going to be a, a wild ride, <laughs> I, I would think. Because even now, we don't, I don't even know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're walking into the unknown multiple times. So it's just, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's pretty scary at the same time. And yeah, I would just say strap up. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up watching like, you know, Derek Comedy and Smosh and all these other YouTube channels and yeah. E-Bombs World. So it's like to know that one day... I would also be like one of those little dipshit idiot creators, <laughs> you know what I mean? Making videos. I'd be like, Hey, that's cool. You know, I would have probably learned the right skills then. Yeah. It, it's such a, it's such a, a weird, cause it's not like a, what advice would you give yourself? It's just like, 
what would you tell yourself? Yeah. Like, hey, buckle up, dude. <laughs> wait, I dude. Okay, wait. I don't know how many people know buckle this, up. but okay. So before I was really doing YouTube, I was a dancer and I used to do like a lot of music videos and stuff. And sure. I did the I was in the Wash Me Whip, Wash Me Nay Nay music video. Imagine if I'm there just hitting the nay nay and pops out future Corey. You're gonna be a ghost hunter. And then I just disappear. <laughs> And I'm like, what are you talking about? You put a wand in your own hand. <laughs> watch me whip. <laughs> watch me net. <laughs> that, I changed my answer. That's what I would do. <laughs> Final answer. What was, uh, Corbin, what questions did you have? I don't know. I'm still thinking about the hairstyle that you had in that music video. That was Corey looks like the Slim Jim dude. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an actual fact. It, <laughs> that is yeah. a real hairstyle he had. Just straight up, just yeah. boom. Yeah. Literally. Vertical. Yeah. Well, in that music video, I had this hair. But the the Tiger was Khalifa music video was when I was the Slim Jim. Okay, now you're just bragging. Yeah, and then I could talk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I got a question. Okay, this one's actually pretty good. Which place that you've investigated, not counting the Warren Museum, was the most impactful for you guys? Ooh, that's a fun one. I think I think for me it's uh it's gonna be a tie mm -hmm. between our first visit to Belair House mm -hmm. and our first visit to Trans Allegheny. I'm saying that because by the time this comes out you'll have seen that we've gone back to both places but Blair House and Trans Allegheny were really cool because Trans Allegheny was like an intimate caring kind paranormal experience of this spirit there named Lily with kind of a traumatic history that no one specifically knows but essentially looking for a father figure and here we are essentially she's holding Corey's hand up and down the aisles of this incredibly long uh, asylum and then we had Blair House where we just sat in one room and just told jokes and the REN pod was like, you, I don't know. Like I can't say that it's coincidental timing on anything, nor could we explain it. Like Evan and I cracked that thing apart when we got back from that trip to be like, what the hell could have ever caused this thing to do that? That was insane. So just like casually telling jokes and I don't know whoever, whoever has gone into that house to tell jokes, like it has a really wildly dark ha history there. Yeah. So for us to just go in and tell jokes, so those two moments, I was like, oh, there's, there's there's more to this than just like demon attack me, challenge me. It's like you can go into it and there's potential people and kind and really cool. It felt like we were just hanging out with like a buddy just trying to make him laugh. Yeah. And like, they liked your mama jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It, and they really did. It literally felt like someone who like one of your like friends in like middle school who just broke his leg and he's like super miserable and you're just like trying to like make him laugh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come yeah. on, you know, you want to have a good time. Like that's yeah. what that felt it's like. Very and they were situation. laughing. Yeah. It's funny because I was going to say the exact same two places, hmm. but number one would be Lily. The Lily, Lily situation with me is just, I mean, I watched that video again a couple months ago. And I like started crying while watching it. Like the emotions that I get from during that night and then even just watching it back. It's just so, it's just so sad to me. Yeah. You know, it just, it just like for how long has, you know, Lily like been looking for her father, you know, stuck there. And then she grabbed me because she wanted me to be that. At least that's what we think. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's very emotional and you know it's just a little kid you know she's probably so scared and it's just yeah on, on, just on the bright sad. side of that though like we went back about two years later um and apparently because of our video like now when you go into lily's room it's stockpiled with toys mm. people have like and, and the staff there said yeah because of your video more and more and more people have come there to deliver toys so it's kind of cool that like that experience that we had yeah. Potentially brought her significantly more joy. Yeah. You know, for years to come. And as long as that video is out, people will probably go there and do that. So and, uh, she toys. she remembered us. Yeah. We went back. Um, we won't talk about it because it hasn't come out yet. So we're talking about stuff you haven't uh, seen yet. But like the second experience did, did not disappoint yeah. um, by any means at all. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Corbin? Yeah. I mean, Bel Air House has is, is got to be one of the top ones. I think that's probably secondary, but also like when you and uh, Evan both said the same thing after looking into the black scrying mirror, that was, that was pretty crazy. Bel Air House. Yeah. That was pretty nuts. But the first one is, is, is I think Hillview Manor because that was the first time I actually ever felt like I was communicating with a ghost or whatever, whatever it was. And I was in the, the, uh, the boiler room. Yeah. It was the Steelers and yeah. I mean that we that's when I just started recently getting into ghost hunting, nothing crazy. And that's when I had the K2 and when you were asking questions, just immediately would go off and then stop whenever 
they didn't want to talk. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. First time I ever felt that way. Isn't it wild that when we started our paranormal videos, all we had was a K2 and dowsing routes? Yeah. And now like you can't make a YouTube ghost hunting video unless you have like 10 backpacks worth of gear. Yeah. And like no, every gizmo I love the and gadget. K2. No, but I'm saying like when we started, it was just like scary place and dowsing rods and K2 and you yeah. talk to people that like had been there. Yeah. And now it's like if you literally don't show up like the Ghostbusters with like 10 generators worth of gear, you like can't make a good video. Yeah. People are like disappointed. People are like, oh, that's all you all you did. Yeah. It's so wild, like in two years, how much it's changed. And it's like, I, wa- I wonder, and I'm very, I'm very curious to know how much that impacts people that want to ghost hunt. But most of their inspiration comes from these YouTube videos that have all these gear. And they're like, well, I can't do that because I don't have these $100 things and $100 things. It's like, mm-hmm. we started, with just those two things. And over time we like yeah. bought another thing and bought another thing and bought another thing. Yeah. And it was just as much fun then as it is now. Yeah. Well, bought things and also accumulated things that just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I like it though. I, I like, I like how it's kind of evolving because it makes ghost hunting safer. You know, <laughs> See, yeah. it, it does. It does. That's my it favorite makes, part. Yeah. Safety. It, no, it makes it safer. Cause think about it growing up. The only way that I knew that was possible to communicate with ghosts was a Ouija board. But now a lot of people know, like we all know, you can use tools. You can use a cat ball. You can use, you know, I I think dowsing rods are safe. People compare dowsing rods to a Ouija board, but I disagree. But you can use a rim pod. You can use a K2. Like I feel like a lot of people didn't know about that type of stuff. So I like that more people are using it. I think it, you know, you can use a K2 without opening a portal, but you can't use a Ouija board without opening a portal. True, true. I also want to bring attention to the that you just said communicate. Oh. <laughs> I like the way you said that. That was great. <laughs> what about cuz? I'm trying to find like a funny question to, to end on. I have a funny question. Okay. Oh. If you had a pet chicken, but it turned out to be your father, what would you do? What color are its eyes? What, dude? Yellow. <laughs> what, dude? Yellow. Oh, sh- think about it. Huh? Think about it. You have a pet chicken and then one day it just goes, it's me. And you're like, what? It's like, it's me. You're I can't, I can't seem to find one in here. Uh, does anyone have like a comedic question? Something more lighthearted that we can end on? I before? thought that was good. Yeah, dude. Super good, dude. That was a chicken. That was that's your dad. How did your dad randomly become a chicken? How can you answer? And that how do question? you tell your mom? This is why it takes so long to edit videos because I have three hours of this footage, but I'm like, we can't. Use. Okay, I have another one. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you have a dad <laughs> and he turns into a chick. <laughs> <laughs> All these chicken and egg questions. Well, the <laughs> first one was it was a chicken that turned into your dad. Oh, I see. Okay. I think I saw a hand up somewhere in front of me. I just have a question. Okay, I came here a few years ago. I showed you the. Yeah. Okay, I brought something home with me. So this is not a comedic question. <laughs> I'm like, I want to end on a lighthearted. And she's like, yeah, demon tried to kill me. Still to this day, I had it on my phone. And it was in my van. Wow. And it was gone after that. After we took the picture and everything. Really? No, it's literally, literally, there's like a face. It's yeah. a really, it's a really yeah. printed yeah. into the car. Okay, does anyone have a, a, a comedic question? Sincerely comedic question to end on. Anyone? You have one? What, what is it? Corey, can you say, Ashley, your chicken tenders are ready? <laughs> That's more of a statement, I would say. But do yeah, please. Was that a question? Should I do that it? That was more of a request, not really a question. <laughs> Should I do it? Do it. Do it. Make the people happy. Ashley, it's your birthday. Ashley. Your chicken tenders are ready, Ashley. It's been seven years. It's literally been seven years. They're cold, but they're ready. <laughs> and also, you have to pick them up. I can't. We're not allowed there. <laughs> yeah, we're not allowed we there anymore. We can't go get them for you. <laughs> nope. Holiday Lanes hates us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for, for coming out tonight. I appreciate you you joining on this on this journey. Uh, this is something that we think and we really hope. Ser- seriously, when this, this is over, go outside. Exchange phone numbers if you want to do that. I don't know. I'm yeah. not peer pressuring you. Yeah, make but some friends to ghost hunt with around. Make, yeah, here. exactly. Make some friends, hang out, do some ghost hunting. Share your stories too. You have people all around you that you know will listen to you happily. Uh, you know, you don't have to wait for 23 years to share your story with someone. <laughs> uh, you, you can you can share it. You know, so. 
that's the whole point of this. Any final notes, sir? I love you. How can <laughs> look at the sweatshirt he's wearing as he says this? Corbin, how do you follow that? How do you follow someone saying I love you? Do it. I don't know. I, all I can say is I got a lot more scared now that it's dark. But when we started, it was a lot. It was daytime. I could actually see the parking lot. Now I can't see anything. Mm -mm. So yeah, that's good. Well, we will be uh, right out there in just a couple minutes. We'll take pictures with everyone. Uh, we can sign whatever stuff that you have too. Uh, we have. We Did anybody see that? What? What? What was that? What? What? I just. I just saw like a shadow fly up the wall behind us. Drive safe, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I swear. We have cameras. We do have cameras we on have that. Cameras. Yeah, exactly. So y'all saw that? A couple of people saw that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool way to end. Seriously, thank you all so much for coming. It means the world to Woo! us. Thank you all. Thank you. Go.